Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and welcome to the last video of 2017, which should publish on the last day of 2017. This is the answers video for the Q&A. I have your questions right here. Uh, before I get started, though, there are some specific people I would like to thank. Uh, some folks that have sent some stuff, donated things to the channel. I haven't had a chance to uh, thank publicly uh, before now, so I want to make sure to thank them here. Um, I want, first of all, I want everyone to understand that nobody should ever feel obligated to send me anything. Uh, please, don't feel like you have to do that. Uh, it's greatly appreciated if you want to help out. I just won't want anybody to feel like you have to. Uh, I'm not here just trying to get free stuff from people. I'm really not. Um, uh, the, on the other hand, the stuff that people have sent uh, has really helped the channel a lot. Um, over the last uh, couple of years or so, some really great items have been sent here that I've been able to review, uh, that have helped fill some gaps in the collection, helped me complete a few items. Very helpful, so thank you to everyone who has ever sent anything uh, to me to help the channel. Uh, it's so greatly appreciated. Um, so I want to make sure I thank um, Lawson Allen. Lawson Allen has sent several packages to me uh, with some really useful and cool things. Uh, some helped me complete something and uh, some research material that will be very helpful. Um, he sent, in one of the packages, he sent a whole bunch of um, the, the catalogs, the G.I. Joe catalogs that came with the vehicles. Now, I had a lot of the catalogs from, you know, the earlier years, but he included some catalogs from like the later years and the 90s that I didn't have. And so those things are really cool to look at. Um, somebody suggested maybe I should do a whole video just looking at those catalogs. I think that's kind of a fun idea. I hadn't thought of that before. So that's something I might do in the future. Maybe I can work that up as like a, uh, a mid-week video or something. Just going through those catalogs, that was really cool. Uh, so thank you, Lawson. I greatly appreciate that. Um, I also want to thank Larry Leora. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Larry uh, sent me two huge boxes of modern carded figures and boxed vehicles, and it's enormous. Um, I mean, I have a lot of it right here. I mean, I am, I've got so much of this stuff, I'm not entirely even sure what to do with it yet. Um, I'm going to look for look, vehicles to... Uh, even, like, these things, these are cool. Let, let, check this out. It plays the song. Um, so just so much stuff. Large vehicles. Um, there's so much stuff here. And so I'm going to look for ways to integrate those into uh, the reviews. Um, uh, you know, I don't specifically review modern uh, G.I. Joe toys, but if I did, I'd have a pretty good start on it right here. So thank you, um, Larry. That was um, a lot more than expected, uh, and I want to make sure that you understand that I appreciate that. Uh, also, Lance Toss. Lance, um, you may remember, did the painting for the preview image on the Bridge Layer and Toll Booth review, uh, the review that I did with Kevin Maley. Um, I still think that artwork is fantastic. Uh, Larry, um, uh, he said that he'd be interested in working on another project like that. Larry, I will be sending you an email with an idea for something we can do together again, um, and I just look forward to working with you. I still need to find a frame that will fit that painting because that needs to be on my wall. I still look at it every once in a while and it's it's just awesome. So thank you very much Lance. Now let's get to the questions. I've printed them all out here. Um, now I was in a little bit of a rush when I had to print these because um, it was a work day and I had a lot of work to do. Uh, so um, they are in reverse order of uh, when they were uh, posted, so the most recent one is first, so I'll just have to read them in that, in that order. Uh, also, uh, you guys replied to some of the questions, and when I copied and pasted them into a Word doc, it did not indent the ones that were 
replies. So uh, I've tried to mark those so that I'm not I'm actually an answering the questions and not your replies. So hopefully I got all those. Without further ado, let's go ahead and answer your questions. The first question on my list, which is also the last question to be asked, uh, is from Cyber Tiger Retro Showcase and Reviews. Uh, Cyber Tiger, who has been uh, in videos, my videos before, a uh, good friend of the channel, uh, hello Cyber Tiger, um, he asks, um, Hoodster, uh, do you think the Joe's inclusion in a larger shared multiverse is a strength for the brand or an ill-advised uh, dilution? Good question, um, and I think it entirely depends on how it's done. Um, I thought one of the strengths of the Marvel comic book series is that it did not integrate G.I. Joe into the Marvel Universe. Um, it kept it as its own, uh, its own thing, which allowed it to develop its own universal rules without being beholden to the Marvel Universe rules. Um, and that, I think, helped G.I. Joe in the comic book series a lot to kind of develop its own uh, tone, its own, uh, its own flavor, uh, its own characters, and its own world. Uh, and I very much appreciated that at the time I was reading the comic book series. So that kind of makes me think maybe including G.I. Joe in a Hasbro cinematic universe maybe is not the best idea. But on the other hand, it depends on how well it's done. Um, I've not been extremely thrilled with other attempts to integrate G.I. Joe into a Hasbro universe. Um, usually they end up playing second fiddle, fiddle to Transformers. Transformers being now the big money maker, um, and G.I. Joe isn't really. Um, and so I do have concerns about how G.I. Joe will be treated in that uh, universe, but um, but I'm always willing to let them give it a try. I'm, I'm, I'm open if they, if they can do a good job of it and do it in a way that uh, makes G.I. Joe interesting and exciting, you know, I, I, I'm for it. I'll, I'll check it out and I hope they do it well. Um, Union Pacific 833 um, says, this is a long one, uh, hi HCC788, hello. Uh, first, I would like to say I love videos and uh, keep up the amazing work. Thank you. Um, I am 16 and you get a fair amount of ridicule when your friends find out you collect toys uh, from when your dads were growing up. Yeah, I could imagine. Um, uh, I mostly ignore them because um, I enjoy G.I. Joe and they won't take that away from me. Good. Uh, thanks for teaching me that. Um, and thanks for, for your videos that show me it doesn't matter your age, you can still have fun with G.I. Joe. That's right, even when you're old like me. Uh, now for the question. Uh, if you uh, aren't a huge fan of some of the sci-fi elements of G.I. Joe, but uh, what are your opinions on the shuttles, the Defiant, and the Crusader? Um, I have a beat-up Crusader missing uh, all the tail fins. Uh, yeah, those tend to go missing. Um, several yellowed and uh, severely yellowed and missing the pilot. Uh, and it's still in my top five favorite vehicles. Sorry about the long question. Uh, I just had to, a lot to ask and uh, say. That's okay. Uh, thanks for the joy you put in your, um, uh, you put in uh, into all our lives and keep it up. UP eight thirty three. Uh, thank you very much. Those are very kind words. Um, and you know, you get a little bit of ridicule even as an adult uh, collecting toys. But you know, don't worry about it. I mean. The people who get it will get it, and the people who won't, won't, and you just can't fix everybody. Uh, but as far as the Defiant and the Crusader, I think both of them are really cool. I've seen both. I don't own either of them yet, but I've seen them both in person uh, many times, um, and they're really interesting. Of course, I'm not much of a science fiction in G.I. Joe kind of guy, but I still have to acknowledge that a lot of thought and effort went into those toys, um, and... They made some pretty cool toys with some pretty amazing features. So I'm looking forward to eventually someday uh, reviewing both of those. So, I mean, I can appreciate the toys for what they are, uh, even if I don't think they necessary, necessarily integrate into the G.I. Joe universe perfectly. Um, I can still recognize, you know, uh, good uh, artistry and good engineering, uh, good design. I can still appreciate those things. Uh, so thank you for your question. Next question by R. 
Uh, Pas Pasquilino. I apologize if I pronounced your name incorrectly. I'm from Oklahoma. He asks, if, if you were to select the golden, silver, and bronze age of G.I. Joes, what would, uh, what would be your years? My gold era is 82 to 85. Uh, silver, 86 to 88, and bronze, 89 to 91, um, and that's Ramon from Brazil. Hello, Brazil uh, from the United States. Um, uh, interesting question. I think you, the years you laid out are probably pretty close to what I would choose. So I'm not sure I, I as much as I uh, appreciate the 1982 Joes and that whole series, I might not put it in the Golden Age, just because of um, all the cost-cutting measures that they took that I think sort of limited that first year of G.I. Joe's. And of course they were groundbreaking at the time, but um, many, many reused parts. Um, it, I'm not sure I'd put it in the Golden Age. It's like, a, it's like the, the, the proto-Golden Age. I don't know what you call the age before the Golden Age, but it's, it's like it's what got everything started. But I'd say the Golden Age started in 83 and built up through, um, yeah, about 85. Uh, in 86, we, there was a, a change um, as more science fiction and fantasy elements got integrated. Um, and then Bronze Age, 89 to 91. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Uh, and then after 91, is that, what, the Dark Ages? Um, but to be fair, I've still found a lot of really cool stuff in the 90s. Uh, I, in fact, I've done videos about that. So, you know, not completely down on the 90s. But there was definitely a shift uh, in, you know, after around 1991 that took the line in a totally different direction. So I think, I think those years would probably about, be about right for gold, uh, silver, and bronze age. <clears throat> Uh, Luke Chui, uh, again, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, uh, he says, uh, Hi, I know you're a lawyer by profession. Uh, what kind of law do you practice? Also, do any other members of your family collect toys? I'm a fan of your videos. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Um, I do, I am a lawyer. I landed into a very unusual niche in the law uh, that most people don't know about. Um, I worked for my county's public defender's office, but most public defenders work on criminal cases. I don't work on criminal cases. I'm in the civil division. Most people aren't even aware that the public defender gets appointed in civil cases, but in a few, we do. Um, and in my state, the uh, we get appointed to represent uh, people who uh, are being petitioned to be uh, involuntarily committed to a hospital due to severe mental illness. So I represent a lot of people who are alleged to have severe mental illness and to meet the statutory um, uh, threshold to require uh, hospitalization due to their mental illness. So um, uh, those are my clients. Uh, I spend a lot of time in mental hospitals, a lot of time in mental hospitals. Um, the other thing that we do in my group is we represent uh, the wards in guardianship cases. Uh, two kinds of guardianship cases. If the ward has a family member that has uh, petitioned to be their guardian and the ward doesn't have enough assets to, to uh, hire an attorney to represent them in that case, the court appoints us to represent those wards. So we go and talk to them and see if they really do need a guardianship and see, you know, if they agree to it or not, or, you know, if not, uh, you know, what's really going on. And we represent people in those guardianship cases. The other type of guardianship case is when um, somebody needs a guardian, but they don't have a family, family member that can be their guardian. The state is petitioning to be their guardian because there is no one else to do it. Um, and so we get appointed in all those cases to represent the ward um, when the state wants to be their guardian. Uh, and that keeps us pretty busy. Uh, so that, that's what I do. It's, uh, it's highly specialized. Most people have no idea how this stuff works um, because most lawyers don't do it and don't even really know that it's done. 
Um, so it's, it's our little corner of the legal profession, but it's really interesting. I love doing it. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's never boring. Uh, definitely keeps me busy. Um, oh, as for um, any other members of the family that collect toys, you know, I have a, a couple daughters and they, you know, get toys every once in a while and you can say that they have a collection. Uh, Susan has a few things here and there, uh, but they don't really collect toys like, like I collect toys. Um, and that's fine. I, I want to make sure that they develop their own interests. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think that's the answer to those questions. Thanks for asking. Alien Doom Syndrome asks, if G.I. Joe had never existed, and there are, any, uh, are there any other toy lines or activities from your childhood that would have inspired you to make videos? Uh, if so, what are they? Ooh, good question. Um, before G.I. Joe was reissued in 1982, my first love uh, in action figures was Star Wars. I was heavily into Star Wars, had so many Star Wars um, and so that might, that's the most likely candidate. I probably just would have stuck with Star Wars, you know, through Return of the Jedi, and then, you know, when, and, and in the later series that were released later. Um, I'm really not that much into Star Wars, especially, you know, post tenor Star Wars uh, at all now, but because of G.I. Joe. Um, G.I. Joe really took over when, uh, when it was released, but. If G.I. Joe hadn't existed, it probably would have continued to be Star Wars. I did get a few other toy lines. I mean, I got some Transformers. Um, I don't think I was ever... And I liked Transformers, especially the cartoon series, but I don't think I was into the toys enough to have enough of a nostalgic connection to do videos about them now. Um, same with Mask. I had a few Mask toys, and I liked the cartoon, but... None of those really rose to the heights of G.I. Joe as far as influence. So um, the only thing that I can think of that would have been a candidate for that would have been Star Wars. Uh, thanks for asking. Really cool question. Now let's go to uh, Dominic Lee, uh, who says, uh, Do you own every uh, ARAH vintage G.I. Joe figure? And if not, which ones have eluded you? Uh, thanks and great work, man. Enjoy the channel and what you do. Thank you very much. Uh, happy holidays to you and yours. Yojo and knowing is half the battle. Uh, Yojo to you as uh, also. Thank you and happy holidays to uh, all of your uh, clan. Uh, thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, do I own every vintage G.I. Joe figure? I do not. Um, and as for which ones have eluded me, a lot of them. <laughs> um, I was thinking, I, I still haven't counted everything up, but I would guess that um, I am about maybe a little over halfway through collecting the Real American Hero figures. That doesn't necessarily include even all the vehicles, but I'm roughly about halfway through, I think, with the collection. Um, now, some very generous donations, for instance, Max Rebo's Ghost Music uh, sent me a whole bunch of 90s uh, figures. I did an unboxing of those a while back, and that helped tremendously fill these gaps of, in the 1990s of stuff that I wasn't even close to getting yet. Uh, now, I have a lot of those, and that was a huge help. Uh, but there are still gaps that I have to fill. Um, I mean... Recently, I got, I'm pretty sure, my first uh, Shadow Ninjas figure. Shadow Ninjas from 1994. I only got one of them so far. Uh, so there, there's, there are a lot. There are some rare figures that uh, I, I still need to get. Um, but it's not so much the, the, the rare stuff that is a barrier. Um, or even the price of it, because I can, you know, I can budget, I can eventually get even the rare stuff, but it's the volume of it. There is so much. If you go through yojo.com and just look at how much stuff they put out each year, even straight through the 90s, I mean, look at 1993. Look at how many figures they released in 1993. There is so much. So I think being halfway-ish through getting it uh, is pretty darn good. Um, plus, I enjoy the journey. I enjoy the journey of collecting um, almost as much as having the things is the, uh, the, the, the search, the hunt um, is always fun. So 
Uh, I hope that answers your question. I have a long way to go. Um, so we'll, but I'm making progress. A little bit of progress each day, I think. Uh, John uh, Nahodil, John Nahadil. I apologize, John, uh, for butchering your name. But your question is, uh, being an old G.I. Joe fan uh, like myself, uh, what do you think of the newer, more articulated figures they brought out for the 50th anniversary line? I think they're a step up from an already great toy line. Well, in fact, I did get some of the uh, 50th anniversary stuff. In fact, right here, that's my 50th anniversary beachhead right there. Um, and these figures, oh, well, there goes an accessory that just fell off, a tiny one that uh, I don't want to get lost. There it is. Um, and, well, that's actually illustrates one of my points about um, the 50th anniversary line and a lot of the modern era, fi era figures, which I now have a lot of modern era figures now, uh, is that um, there's no denying that they are great figures. I mean, the detail, the articulation, um, the accessories, even it's really tiny accessories like this crossbow thing. Um, I mean, you look at these and it would be absurd to say that they're not fantastic figures. Absolutely they are. Um, what I think they are, though, is they're fantastic for collectors. Um, when I look at just how they're marketed um, and how they're designed and these tiny accessories that uh, are going to be very easy for a child to lose if, if a kid plays with these, um, I don't think that they're necessarily marketed toward kids at all. I think they're marketed toward people my age. Uh, and that's fine, especially if you're my age and you like collecting those things. Uh, it gives you some really awesome stuff. And I, that's no exaggeration, really awesome. Uh, uh, just really cool stuff to, to collect. Um, and I'm sure there are some kids that get these things and uh, recognize how great they are and appreciate playing with them. But I just don't think they're marketed that way. Um, and I think that's the thing that right now is missing for G.I. Joe is um, how to draw in the next generation of G.I. Joe fan. Um, I'm not, I don't think the 50th anniversary figures necessarily uh, do that, uh, but what they do uh, is give uh, adult collectors uh, my age some really wicked cool stuff to get. So I, I can appreci definitely appreciate them on that level. Uh, Aaron Decker says, uh, as you progress and run out of Joe figures to review, do you think you may choose another toy line to review? Uh, if so, what line? Uh, also, what direction should Hasbro take uh, to sort of relaunch or update G.I. Joe uh, instead of G.I. Joe fighting terrorists? Um, okay, good questions. Um, as I run out of figures to review, um, I have announced previously that um, you know there will be uh, an end to this project of reviewing every vintage G.I. Joe toy, uh, 82 to 94. Um, it's a finite project, so yeah, eventually I will run out of stuff to review. What will I do with the channel after that? Will I continue to do reviews? Will I just close up shop? I think I will continue to do reviews of something other than G.I. Joe, but as for what that is, I'm not going to say right now, because uh, for one thing, I would want it to be a surprise. Uh, for another thing, it gives me a lot of time to change my mind <laughs> if, if I come up with a better idea. So I don't want to lock myself into anything right now. Um, all I can say is I have some ideas, but that's all they are right now. It's just or just ideas. Um, your other question, uh, questions, um, oh, what direction um, should Hasbro take to relaunch or update G.I. Joe? I don't know that I have an exact answer for that. But what I'd like to see them do is really focus like a laser beam on getting new fans in. Uh, I do not need them to make something that pleases me or that is aimed at me at all. Um, I, the, I've got my era of G.I. Joe. I don't need anything else. What I'd like to see is new fans. And if they can bring in new fans by, you know, rebooting and doing another iteration of Real American Hero with Duke and Cobra and Snake Eyes and all that, great. You know, if they can modernize that in a way that draws new people in, fine. 
if they can't do that, though, I am also okay if they go in a totally new direction, as long as it works. As long as it is done with care and thought and intelligence and draws in a new generation of fans, I'm okay with that. I have some ideas about what might work for that, but um, but um, there's very general ideas. I, I don't really have any specifics on that. I just hope they do something, do something great with it that will give us an, another generation of fans. Uh, Jason... Kirist says, uh, are you planning to return to the old Marvel run of G.I. Joe comics? Uh, I would love to. I just don't have the time to do it. That has been the thing I wanted to do probably the most with this channel is get back to reviewing the comic books. It's been now a couple of years, I think, since I've done that. Um, but as it stands right now, I just am barely getting the weekly reviews done. Uh, more and more work has to go into them. Um, and I'm having less and less time to do other things. Um, every once in a while I throw uh, up a quick short video in the middle of the week. Those are easy to produce though because they take only barely uh, more time than just sitting and uh, doing the shooting. The editing is really easy. Uh, they're short so they don't take a lot of time to render. Uh, but the comic book reviews are a lot more time consuming, uh, take a lot more time to edit, and um, to do those I would have to cut out something else. Uh, and right now I don't want to cut out anything else. So um, uh, I don't know how I can bring that back, but that's like the, probably the number one thing that I would like to do is bring that back if I could. Um, Todd Humphrey uh, says, in your opinion, uh, was there a single character or vehicle that marked when G. I., the G.I. Joe toy line jumped the shark uh, from realistic military to more fantasy-based toy line? Well, uh, they, they were bleeding in more science fiction and fantasy stuff, you know, really even starting in like 84 with Zartan. You know, Zartan is not realistic, uh, but, you know, it was still more military-focused and it kind of gradually drifted away from that uh, through 86. Uh, but for me, the um, watershed moment was uh, Cobra Law in the animated movie. That was it. I mean, that was jumping the shark for me. That was, that was like the G.I. Joe that I enjoyed, that was gone, and they were doing this new thing that just really didn't appeal to me at all. So that's what I would say it was the moment they jumped the shark. Bart D Man 95 Lobby Works says, How was your Christmas? Uh, pretty good, thank you for asking. I hope yours was pretty good too. Um, he says, uh, What can you say about the G.I. Joe named Gears? He's a guy in blue. I don't know very much about Gears, so I will have to look into that figure. So I guess I don't have much to say about him at all. Um, at least not right now. Uh, he says, can you shout with your Destro impression? Destro impression. My Destro impression. Okay. <clears throat> Militarily speaking, Cobra Commander is a well-class buffoon. Destro's Scottish. I don't do a great Scottish accent. Uh, anyway, that's Destro shouting that thing that you wanted. The thanks, for, uh, thanks and, uh, and I hope you had a good Christmas. Happy New Year to you. Um, the heart of the story we tell says, hey... Uh, first, I'm a big fan of both you and G.I. Joe in general. Thank you very much. Uh, it says, so keep up the good work. I will try. Um, but on, my, on to my question. Uh, I know you are a classic G.I. Joe guy, and that means uh, 80s, mid-90s. Um, uh, hey, some of those 90s figures you even like. I do even like some of those 90s figures. Uh, but I wonder what you think about the O-ring figures they released post-2000 before they went to modern figures. I ask because those figures... Um, all, uh, always seem to get lost. Uh, too modern for classic collectors, too classic for modern collectors, uh, but I have found some great concepts there, uh, like the vehicle pattern and color uh, on Python Patrol figures. Uh, good question. Now, I wouldn't have been able to answer that question if not for the generous gift of Larry. Uh, and I actually have some of them now. In fact, um, let's see, this, uh, these are O-ring figures that came with the uh, reprint of classic comic book. Um, and I've got, got more. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, some dreadnoughts here. 
Um, and I haven't opened these uh, yet, uh, so I haven't been able to play around with them, see how they are. Uh, but my immediate impression is uh, they are not bad. Uh, in general, I think I like the colors of the classic figures over um, these new colors that they gave them. Um, and uh, but they they all got new head sculpts, and in general, the new head sculpts are are pretty good. Um, I think on some of them, I would have liked I liked the old head sculpt better. But they actually made the the newer heads more in scale with the body of the figure. Uh, some of the old heads could be a little kind of too big, uh, you know, because they're toys. Um, but uh, so there's some improvements on these, I think. Um, and but I mean, look at these. If you look at these, with the classic comic book and the classic uh, O-ring figures, um, these look to me like they are marketed toward older collectors who uh, remember these comic books and. Uh, would like to relive those days again. I mean, these are uh, marketed even with like, you know, uh, you know, old file cards and all the classic logos and everything. Um, not something that's designed to bring in new fans, but something that's supposed to appeal to someone like me. And it does appeal to someone like me. Um, and I think in general they're pretty cool. But I think you are right. They do kind of fall in that gap. They're not modern, or they're not like modern articulated figures. They are, you know, the classic O-ring figures, but they are after my cutoff point in 1994. They came out later, so um, uh, I, I kind of agree with your assessment. They get lost in the middle, um, and I think it probably is uh, just kind of because of when they re were released. Uh, but I think they're all right. Um, I think they're pretty cool. I definitely... Um, uh, give them a comparison to the classic figures uh, if I review them in the future, so that's cool. Uh, Kevin Maley, uh, who helped me with the uh, Tollbooth and Bridge Layer video, uh, thank you again for that. I got to meet Kevin at uh, JoeCon, that was really cool. He says, here's my question, which G.I. Joe toy did you not discover until you were an adult, but looks like something you would have loved uh, to have as a kid? Uh, he says, mine is the Mobile Command Center. Um, and I did know about the Mobile Command Center when I was a kid, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, there are a lot of them, actually, and I'm looking around here uh, to s try to grab one specifically. Um, one that I did recently, let me see if I can get it out of here. The, uh, the Monster Blaster uh, APC, the one that I opened and assembled. Um, you know, it's, I wouldn't have liked the colors as a kid, but the toy itself uh, is really quite interesting, and I think I would have liked it. Um, and I've done some reviews, you know, several reviews, in fact, of figures that came out after I had left G.I. Joe. I didn't know anything about them, but I'm pretty sure I would have liked them. Um, I can't reach the figure because it's over there, but Interrogator, pretty cool, and I'm sure I would have liked that as a kid. So there's a lot of them, um, and that's one of, been one of the great things about this project is discovering... Uh, new things that I didn't even know about, but uh, are still really cool. <clears throat> All right, uh, Skunk Ape, uh, another friend of the channel uh, who helped out with the uh, Clean Sweep review. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Thanks, Chris. Make sure you check out his stuff. Um, he says, are there any figures or vehicles you have concerns that you will never be able to obtain? Uh, maybe there's something uh, really rare or expensive. Yes, yes, yes. Um, previously, <clears throat> I thought the big problem would be the Cobra Missile Command headquarters from 1982, that that cardboard playset. But I see those come up every once in a while. They're expensive, but you know, expensive is just a matter of you know waiting and accumulating the funds to get it. I, I can do that. But um, the Sears exclusive uh, Dreadnought vehicle sets, the uh, ground attack set and the air attack set. Um, those seem difficult to find complete and intact and in a condition that would be ready to review. Those, I think, will be difficult and, and expensive and hard to find in any condition. Um, and there are variants, especially the motorcycle that came with the ground attack set. So I've got to hunt down variants. 
and to top it off, I don't really even like the vehicles, so I gotta like pay a whole bunch of money to get these vehicles that I don't. I mean, I don't really like the color change to make them dreadlock dreadnought vehicles. It's just my personal preference. I don't love them, but they fall within the parameters of the reviews for this channel. So at some point, I gotta try to track them down. That's on the uh, the top of my list of things that are just gonna be really hard to. Uh, get complete. Uh, thank you for asking that question. Mike Smith says, "Hey Brian, uh, how was collecting? Has collecting vintage uh, Joes affected your life in a positive lay way? For example, uh, it's brought uh, brought back great memories and helped me bring a positive thing in my life when I was at my lowest point in my life." Um, it also brought me into the community where I consider you and many others I've come across as friends and fellow collectors. Uh, thanks for everything. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to you and your family. Thank you and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, well, Mike, um, my uh, as far as what is how it's affected my life in a positive way is very similar to how it's affected you. Um, I came into this at a very low point. Um, and it gave me just like this little spark of light when I didn't have a whole lot positive going on in my life at the time uh, and a whole lot of negative. Um, and so it, it helped lift me out of that. It helped me meet some great people and it did introduce me to this community of collectors. I mean, uh, you're, what you're describing is, I would describe the same thing. Uh, and so thank you, uh, Mike, for just, um, uh, for asking your question and for giving me the opportunity to do this kind of thing. I mean, you guys, uh, your support of this channel has enabled me to um, just, uh, this has been like a dream. Um, the support that I've gotten from you guys and the interactions have been so fun and positive. Um, there's so much, um, there's so much. I, I don't, I'm not sure I can completely describe all of it, but, um, uh, there are days when it's tough to, you know, sit down and do the shooting and do the editing and produce the videos. Sometimes I'm tired, have long days at work, but then I think about about the people, about you guys over there on on the other side of this camera who are watching this, and all the great interactions that I've had with you, and all the positive feedback, and all the the friendships that I've formed because of that. Uh, that keeps me well motivated to go and. and do that shooting and do that video anyway, even if I'm tired. So collecting G.I. Joe has caused many n numerous positive things in my life. So thank you, Mike, for that question. Um, and I, I hope you're doing well and doing better in your own life as well. Uh, Cruiser Dave says, a shipwreck once dated a fake mermaid. Uh, if you were to date a real mermaid, would you want one with the bottom half of fish or one with the top half of fish? Hmm. Hang on one second. Hang on one second. I need something to help me answer that question. Okay. Top half or bottom half? Let's see. Bottom half. Christopher Hilt asks, um, hey bud, uh, I can see by the number of comments you're going to have your hands full. Yes. I hope I can get this video done in under three hours. Um, uh, he says, um, my wife, Tiger, that's a cool name, uh, wants to know who your favorite uh, G female, GI, uh, female Joe is. Um, on that note, uh, I'm partial to Jinx, uh, if I had to choose. Also, I'm fully confident in your knowledge of G.I. Joe lore, but if you need help answering a question, feel free to send it my way. I'd be happy to help. Thank you. Um, doing some of the research for uh, this, the, the show, uh, is been a little bit difficult because of the time constraints. Uh, it's hard for me to like look over uh, everything in the comic book and the cartoon series and just see how everything integrated. I'm often um, limited to just looking at specific chunks of it, uh, and so I sometimes I could use some help, um, you know, providing some context uh, to those you know little factoids that I'm uh, looking up all the time. Uh, so thanks for that. As to your question, favorite uh, female Joe uh, would have to be Scarlet, and it's a little frustrating because I don't think we got really a good Scarlet action figure in the vintage run, but that's my favorite female character. Uh, absolutely loved the character in the comic book. Uh, such a strong character, so many sides to her, so um, interesting, uh, and 
just I think she's fantastic and needed a an adequate figure in the vintage line, which I don't think she got. Scarlet would be my answer. Not my favorite female figure, but my favorite female character. If I had to pick a favorite female figure, uh, I mean, Jinx is a good one. Uh, it wouldn't be Scarlet, because I don't think her figures were up to par. I really liked the Lady J action figure um, and the Baroness, so it would probably be a, a, cont a contest between those two as to which figure I think is the best. Uh, so thank you, Christopher. Uh, Tim Bentley says, uh, what's your favorite G.I. Joe figure and why? Uh, also, are you ever going to bring the review of the uh, Battle Android Trooper? Just asking. All right, thank you, uh, Tim. Um, to answer the last part first, the, the Bat review. I have been trying to get to that thing for, I think, like two years. What I'm missing is the variant of the figure with the the bright yellow paint. Uh, I have several of the figures with the orangey yellow paint. That's the more common one. Um, I have not been able to nail down to one with the bright yellow paint. I'm still looking for one. I don't need the figure complete. I only need just the figure to show as an example of the variant. I, I, I don't want to just describe it. I do want to show the variant. But every time I think I got one, you know, it turns out to be the same one that I already have. Sometimes the colors don't come out exactly uh, correctly in photography. Um, so if you're ordering one online, you might think you're getting the yellow variant, but it's just the lighting made it look that way. Uh, and that can be pretty frustrating. So that is what's keeping me from doing the bat review. Man, that is one that, ooh, I want to get to soon but I'm just not ready. That and the Crimson Guard. I actually have quite a ways to do to go to get Crimson Guard ready. File card variants, accessories variants, that's going to take some time, but definitely want to do the bat review. The first part of your question, uh, favorite uh, G.I. Joe figure and why, um, uh, is uh, version 1, really probably version 1.5 of Stalker uh, from 83. Um, and I... I had the straight arm stalker in 82, one of my favorite figures. I think that figure actually belonged to my brother, so I had to borrow it from him if I wanted to play with it. But that figure, I think, had the most impact on me at the very beginning of the toy line. Um, I mean, the figure itself was special with the camouflage paint pattern. And then when I, I uh, discovered the comic book, the character was awesome. He was used to great effect in the comic book. Um, got a lot of development. He was integrated into the backstory of like um, the ninjas, uh, Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes. Um, he was a great leader. So much to like about Stalker uh, that influenced my love for the figure, and I, and I loved the figure even before I read the character. So uh, that's pro that all, for all time. That'll be my favorite figure. All right, and Ryan Sweeney says, uh, one figure or vehicle that you reviewed in 2017 uh, did you have a low opinion of uh, that changed when you reviewed it? Uh, that's a good question. Um, uh, usually I, I can kind of figure out, you know, as I'm preparing for the review, how I'm going to feel about a particular figure or vehicle. Uh, but one that changed, like, I was almost done with the video when I changed my mind was the the uh, uh, Iron Grenadier's Demon Tank, uh, which I had pegged for the middle tier. And it wasn't one that I disliked at all, um, but I had it pegged for the middle tier. But just as I was going through and, and playing with it, and I just I felt like it needed to be in the top tier. I fe felt like it was better after the review than my first impression of it. Uh, and again, my first impression wasn't bad. It was just, um, it turned out to be better than, than what I first thought. Uh, that's the first one that comes to mind. Um, what else? Uh, let's see. I mean, I was, I was surprised at how much I liked Interrogator, but um, I, I was pretty confident I was going to like the Interrogator before I started reviewing it. Um, but yeah, I think the Demon Tank is the first one that comes to mind. Uh, thank you. That's a really cool question. Um, Matt Lurch says, um, if you could create a figure of yourself by picking any job you uh, have and uh, had and picking any faction in the Joeverse, okay, um, 
what would the file card read as? File name, code name, uh, primary uh, and secondary military specialty, uh, qualifications, uh, and a quick quote. Wow, that's, uh, I don't know if I can answer all of that. That's a lot. Um, I, <clears throat> let me think about that. Um, secondary military specialty would probably have to be like legal services. Um, and um, primary military, you know, I am not an in infantry sort of guy, um, but as a kid I had the most fun playing with the infantry troopers, uh, the ground pounders, the bullet catchers. Uh, to me, they were the heart of G.I. Joe, and if I were to make a G.I. Joe figure about myself, I would be right in there. Um, and hey, I'm an action figure, right? I'm not really, really me. Uh, I can have the action figure with, uh, you know, with the muscles and the guns and the camouflage. That, that would be it. That would be the primary military specialty. Um, you know, if I were to make a figure about my, uh, of myself, it would probably end up looking a whole lot like uh, Falcon. Uh, but with the beard. So just copy Falcon, uh, put my name on it, um, uh, code name, um, <laughs> code name Hoodster, uh, and um, uh, and just copy and paste that. And that, that's that's my figure now. Uh, give Falcon a beard. That's it. Um, that that's the best I can come up with right now. I think. Um, now Toy Guy, uh, eleven eighty two says, uh, after you finish your journey through the vintage GI Joe line, where do you plan to take your channel from there? But this is similar to what was asked before. I have an idea. I don't want to say what the idea is yet because I want to leave some space for me to, to change my mind if I come up with a better idea. Um, I don't think I will just shut the channel down. I think I will continue to review things, but as to what that will be, um, that is for the future to know. I, I cannot give that away just at this time. Uh, but thank you for an asking Toy Guy. Uh, Clockwork Cowboy Steam Powered Sheriff. Great name. Uh, says, what's your opinion on the convention exclusive O-ring figures from the past? My favorites are the Crimson Vipers and Sergeant Slaughter and his Renegades. Well, I wasn't going to the conventions way back then, so I can't give a lot of information about it. I don't have a lot of first first-hand knowledge about it. I know that a lot of the older, you know, old school collectors um, still admire those sets. Uh, and that's pretty cool. Of course, I have I have more experience with um, the convention exclusives from the last like five years because I've gone to those conventions. But those are all those aren't O-ring figures. Those are all modern era figures, <clears throat> and some of those look pretty cool. But as you may be aware, uh, those modern era figures mainly you know reuse older parts uh, with very little new added to them. Uh, I know that's a complaint that some collectors have about the convention exclusives. I don't get the convention exclusives um, since I'm not a modern era collector, uh, but I have seen them and they do look pretty cool. But I, I just don't have a lot of uh, insider knowledge about the old ring style that came years before. Um, Mr. Chabon, Mr. Chabon says, um, <clears throat> with so much talent going into the illustrations on your for your channel, thank you. Um, now, that's not all me. Uh, other people help, have helped me with those, too. Um, so how would you feel about um, uh, giving a motion comic a go? That would be a lot of fun if I could find the time to do it. And that's the problem with taking on any new projects right now, is just finding the time. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, that would be really cool. Um, uh, I just I just don't have the time to do it. I'd have to do like a tiny bit at a time, and it would take forever. But it could be fun. Thank you, Mr. Chabong, for asking your question. Uh, Zazil Phoenix says, "Will you ever get into doing frequent stop motion original stories?" Uh, I've done, of course, something some things kind of like that. Not a, quite exactly stop motion, but like these action scenes that I did with the figures and vehicles in the past, uh, and those were fun. Uh, and I would love to do those again. They are very time consuming, uh, but I enjoy doing them. In fact, I've got this idea for like a whole like feature length movie um, of you know action scenes done entirely with the vintage figures and vehicles that I think would be a lot of fun. Um, but my idea is for it like it's so huge take a long time and a lot of help to do. But, uh, you know, 
that's a secret ambition of mine is to someday actually do that. Um, I think it would. I think it could turn out really cool. Um, but uh, I just have to ever find the time to do it. Uh, that's always the challenge. Uh, so thank you for asking about that. Um, I, I would love to do that. Uh, Tim Roper says, um, when, when are we uh, going to see the final Sergeant Slaughter review? Slaughter's Marauder's Sarge uh, review needs to be slaughterized. Yes. Um, and honestly, I'm kind of saving that one. Um, because it will be the last Sergeant Slaughter review. I am tempted, though, to um, redo the first Sergeant Slaughter review because there are a couple things that I got slightly wrong in that review, and I'd like to update it and fix it a little bit. Um, but and I hate getting things wrong in a review. It's not, I mean, it's not really bad stuff, but just little things here and there that I really wish I could fix after the fact. Um, but uh, most likely, the uh, Slaughter's Marauders Sergeant Slaughter will be the last Sergeant Slaughter review in it. I want to save it. I want to save it. Um, because once it's done, it's done. Um, so it may not be for a while. I, I want to save it for a special occasion. Uh, Iceman uh, says, uh, uh, what's at the top of your wish list for additions to your collection? Name one large vehicle or playset uh, and one accessory or figure. Great show, Merry Christmas. Who, Iceman, I tell you, um, one large vehicle has to be the Defiant Shuttle Complex, which I was hoping I could get my hands on this year. Didn't happen. Uh, so it's a higher priority next year. It is very big. It's very expensive. And not just the vehicle itself. To review it, I've got to have the figures, figures plural, that came with it. Their accessories, which themselves can be rare and expensive. The file cards, which nobody ever seems to think about. It seems like they, uh, even the people that are selling the Defiant of the Figures Complete never seem to think about the file cards, which of course I need for my reviews. Um, that'll be difficult, but that is, I mean, it's not the thing that I personally want the most. The thing I personally want the most would be the 1982 Cobra Missile Command Headquarters. That would be the personally the most fulfilling. But for the purposes of the channel and something that I want to review, the Defiant. Uh, and, uh, oh, figure, um, uh, accessory or figure, one accessory or figure. I have still really been wanting to get that Starduster review, but I've got two variants of it that I still need to pick up. So it's probably Starduster, I think. But now I think about it, there are others that I, man, I really, no, I'm just going to stick with Starduster. The Star Public Starduster. I still kind of like to get my hands on the Listen and Fun uh, tripwire with the cassette tape. Uh, Starduster, though. Yeah, Starduster. <laughs> That's a harder question to answer than I thought. Um, Mr. Friend 1973 says, uh, First, thank you for your vids. Thank you. Uh, uh, two questions. Number one, what happened to Comic Book Wednesdays? I know uh, others do comic reviews, uh, but each GI Joe or each Joe YouTuber has their own style. I appreciate, uh, and I'd like to see more uh, of your classic comic reviews and uh, from you. Uh, and number two, can you look into changing um, uh, your end video comment? Only GI Joe is GI Joe. Your videos have grown uh, to become fantastic. That phrase weakens the whole video, uh, though, as uh, it doesn't, uh, it does not qualitatively match your video productions, no offense intended. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, question number one, it's the time that it takes to put into the com comic book reviews. When I do a review of a toy, the audio, for the most part, is recorded at the same time as the video. For a comic book, though, um, I have like an audio track, and then I have to lay over the images of the comic book. On top of that, you have to do the timing right, you have to like zoom in on things, and uh, and crop things, and uh, it takes like twice as long. It's really time consuming to edit those. Um, and that's the number one reason why uh, I, I'm not doing it right now. And that's the number one thing I would like to do if I had the time. If I could bring one thing back, it would be the comic book reviews. Uh, as far as the, um, the tagline at the end of the videos, I'm not going to be changing that because that uh, phrase um, is a part of G.I. Joe history. That phrase was used to close the first ever TV commercial 
for GI Joe back in 1964. And as you probably know, on this channel we uh, really we, we respect our history. Um, we uh, we want to honor our history, even the history bef that came before the 1982 Real American Hero Line, all the way back to 1964 when we, the world was first introduced to G.I. Joe as a toy. And I want to address this, this question kind of in a broader sense, outside of just this one thing. Um, if you feel that there's some part of the reviews that you don't like, and you want to leave a comment saying that I should stop doing it, the answer to that will always be no. I will not. Because my perspective doing these reviews is different from your perspective watching it. You are watching the videos through the filter of your personal preferences. But as the creator of the video, I am seeing all of the feedback from everybody, all the comments, all of the private messages, all of the emails, I see all of it, so I have a pretty good idea of what's working and what's not. And so if I start changing things based on what one commenter says that he doesn't like, you know, I'll change something and please that one guy and piss off ten other people who didn't want me to change it. And so I can't do things that way. On the flip side of that, if you're watching these videos and you do like things and there are things in the videos that you want to keep and don't want to be changed, you don't have to worry that I'm going to change something that you like because some guy made a comment and said he didn't like it. I don't make decisions that way, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, Charles Williams says, um, eye patches and robot arms. Uh, why was this such a thing? Uh, is there any definitive story about how uh, Major Blood lost his eye and arm uh, and had the arm replaced by super sophisticated technology uh, or even why that decision was made for the character? Um, I assume the answer uh, to the second part is just to make him cooler. Um, there seemed to be uh, uh, to maybe uh, a trend in 80s toy cartoons to give uh, the uh, eye patch guy some kind of mechanical arm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got this idea from the skunk ape, uh, skunk ape video on Rambo, Force of Free the Freedom. So that's Chris um, on Comic Tropes. Make sure you check him out on YouTube. Um, there was Gripper from uh, Rambo, uh, from Rambo, Force of Freedom, with an uh, with an eye out and a mechanical clamping arm, and Doc Terror from Centurions with a totally mechanized half of his body, um, also one eye out. Um, also, the missing eye and the robot arm had to be. Uh, on opposite sides of the body, um, which doesn't really make sense assuming they were in some kind of heinous accident. Uh, the weaker form uh, of Monstar from Silverhawks uh, also sported a wicked eye patch, but sadly no robot arm. Uh, Hammerhead from Thundercats also had this conceit. Um, it's interesting to note uh, that in the previous decade, the heroic six million dollar man uh, was the one with uh, the eye and arm gimmick. Uh, are there any GI, uh, 80s characters uh, this kind of gimmicky trend showed up in? Uh, 80s characters, well, I mean, obviously you mentioned Major Blood, and I don't, I don't recall them ever actually providing a backstory for his eye patch and robot arm. I'm not sure that they had one. You know, it just kind of hinted that he had some, some history uh, with some, some injury. And of course, it did make the character a little bit more interesting. Um, but uh, you mentioned six, six million dollar man. Before that, even uh, the first twelve inch GI Joe had a scar. Um, it wasn't, I, I think, until later that they started to, in in GI Joe action figures, equate you know, essentially ug ugliness uh, or flaws, physical flaws with the bad guys. Um, if, you know, if you were uh, perfect looking, if you looked like Duke with the square jaw and the perfect teeth, then you're the good guy. Uh, if you deviate from, you know, what is uh, aesthetically pleasing for the norm, then you had to be a villain. I mean, that was the whole idea behind the Dreadnoughts. They were all uh, ugly nonconformists. Um, so, I just think that maybe was an 80s thing. It was kind of an 80s shorthand to 
very easily let you identify who the villains are. Um, and maybe not uh, the uh, most thoughtful way to do it because you know it does equate basically almost any physical flaw with uh, with villainy. Uh, but uh, but I mean, what isn't always the case? First GI Joe was the one with the scar, as you point out. Um, a six million dollar man. He was the one with the the physical injuries and the the body parts that were replaced with robotics. Um, uh, I wasn't in the 80s, but Robo Joe, kind of the same thing, uh, except except he got to be a good guy, so he he bucked that trend. So yeah, Robo Joe, um, the shining example of progress in GI Joe. KV467 asks, I'd like to know more about how you played with the toys as a kid. In the house, in the backyard, did you ever make dioramas? Uh, I didn't really make a whole lot of dioramas. As for how we would play, sometimes we'd play indoors, sometimes we'd play uh, outdoors. Um, that's how a lot of our accessories uh, got lost, uh, playing with GI Joe's uh, outdoors. How we played, okay, I have a, a brother who's a little bit younger than I am, but we were still both in the age range to play with G.I. Joe together. And we had a friend in the neighborhood named Sam. He lived about half a block down the street. Um, and so the three of us would often play together, like every day. Uh, and we were, all three of us, super into G.I. Joe. Um, and we would all just kind of share our toys. And uh, between the three of us, um, we had almost everything in G.I. Joe from 82 through about, I think, 86. I'd say in about 87 is when we stopped really trying to get everything. Um, but uh, we, there were a few things that we didn't have. I don't think any of us sent off for any of the mail-away stuff. But the retail stuff... Um, most of it we got. We didn't get all of the Sears exclusive stuff because a lot of times we just didn't know about it. If we had know about, known about it, we probably would have got it. But, I mean, we had practically everything between the three of us, and we'd just pool all of our stuff together. Uh, either we'd go over to his house or he'd over, come over to our house, and we'd just have epic battles. We'd have storylines that would go over several days. Um, you know, uh, it was huge. Uh, and we would, you know, do it until we got tired of one particular story and then we just start over, just start in a whole new direction. Or sometimes we would like start small, like we want to have like this one specific battle um, between uh, specific, these guys, GI, some G.I. Joe guys versus Cobra guys. Um, and sometimes a bigger story would come out of that. Uh, and we just kind of follow that along to wherever it went and it was it was a lot of fun uh, so that's usually how we played is the three of us um, either indoors or uh, outside um, and uh, just with huge battles but not just battles we had like whole storylines going on usually it, it really didn't tie in very much to the cartoon or comic books uh, we would just make up our own thing um, and uh, just have a lot of fun with it. That's usually how we played with the toys. Michael Johnson says, Thanks for running an awesome channel. Thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas to you and your family. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, a little late, but uh, the same as, as to you as well. Um, in a past video, you said you'd enjoyed visiting Britain. Uh, I'd like to ask where you visited and what you liked about it. Um, Susan and I did very much uh, enjoy visiting the UK. Uh, we spent a lot of our time in London and saw many things in London. Um, of course, there's a lot there, so even you know spending a week there and doing a lot of activities every day, we still weren't able to see everything. Uh, but he also uh, we took a little side uh, adventure uh, out into Nottingham. Uh, so we got out of London for a little while. We took a train up to Nottingham uh, because I have a friend who lived up there. He actually lives in London now. But I wanted to visit a friend there. Um, and Susan is a big fan of Russell Howard. And he was doing one of his comedy shows there in Nottingham. So we went to that. We got to see Russell Howard in person uh, in you know his one of his shows. So that was fun. Uh, that was a Susan thing. She's a big fan. So... Um, well, we lo loved a lot about the UK um, and, and London in particular. Um, the underground uh, system is fantastic. Uh, we were able to go everywhere we wanted and do everything we wanted. Um, we just wish we had more time. 
Uh, and that's one of the, our goals this year is to go back, see some friends again, uh, see some new friends that we've made since then, um, and also see some of the things that we didn't have a chance to see the first time around. So, yeah, we love it. And, you know, we are shameless tourists. So there's no way around that. But as tourists, we had a great time. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, now, uh, Road Pig John uh, asks, uh, what do you think of the, of the 1988 Destro action figure with the gold head uh, that was never released uh, and appeared in the 1988 G.I. Joe catalog? Two years ago, I made a custom of it because it looked pretty cool uh, if, if compared with the one they released. Um, and there's a link here, and I did go check out that link uh, when I saw this question. And it's really interesting. It looks like, uh, for like a prototype uh, for the catalog, they repainted the version 1 Destro chest um, and uh, in kind of the version 2 colors. Uh, it looks really interesting. I think I still probably prefer the version uh, 2 that we got in 1988. I do like that kind of futuristic military uniform they gave him. Uh, but uh, I could, I'd be really interested in seeing your custom of it. I think that could be really cool. I could definitely see a really awesome custom being made of that. Um, so, yeah, that's what I think about it. I think it's really cool, but I still think that the one that we got in 88 probably has the edge for me. I really like that figure. Uh, JoeFan82, another great uh, friend of the channel, uh, has a great YouTube channel himself. Uh, he uh, reviews a lot of modern era G.I. Joe figures, like a lot of the stuff that I have in this box right here. Uh, he's got a great channel. Check him out. Um, he says, as a kid, what were your favorite TV shows, live action or cartoon?" Well, as a kid in the 80s, it was a great time to watch TV. I loved the A-Team, uh, Knight Rider, uh, Airwolf, um, just all of those action-y shows that were kind of aimed at young boys. Man, I dug all of that stuff. As for cartoons, of course, I watched G.I. Joe sometimes, and Transformers, loved Transformers. Uh, the cartoons. I loved the cartoon series more than I even liked the toys uh, for Transformers. But like, I always got up and watched Saturday morning cartoons, and there were dozens and dozens of weird and wacky oddball cartoons uh, from back then that still kind of stick in my mind. There was a, a cartoon called Gilligan's Planet. It was absolutely ridiculous. Just bonkers, but I just loved the thing. Um, and what else was on Saturday mornings? Like, a lot of licensed stuff. Like, there's a cartoon about the Rubik's Cube. It was weird. And I seem to recall, like, way, way back, there was a cartoon of the Lone Ranger that, uh, for some reason, I just really enjoyed. I connected with that and enjoyed that a lot. Um, and uh, just, <laughs> I just liked turning on the TV on Saturday mornings and just watching as many of, of those cartoons. Like, I really like the Hanna-Barbera cartoons. They, a lot of them were really goofy and weird, but I enjoyed that era of cartoons a lot. So, yeah, man, the 80s is a great time to be a kid and watch TV. And I, just, I was a sucker for all of that stuff that was kind of aimed at my age group. Um, Bebo uh, says, um, I once scored a fully intact original Night Raven at a swap meet for $10 uh, and an original Castle Grayskull with all of its accessories for $2.99 at Goodwill. Uh, uh, they, these are little jewels I have scored. What little jewels have you scored at a great price? Well, you know, I don't know if I have any great stories like that. Every once in a while, I will find something cool at a resale shop. Um, that's at a decent price, but usually those are kind of small things and not, um, I mean, the prices are okay, but not spectacular. Uh, a lot of times I run into vendors who are essentially toy dealers and they're charging full price for them. Uh, so I'm not sure I have any great stories like that. Uh, I think the, uh, finding GI Joe toys in the wild here has proven difficult. Uh, some of the best things that I've gotten have been stuff that's been sent to me by viewers. I mean, some of those things are, are really great, and I would have had a difficult time finding them uh, here from a dealer, you know, kind of in the wild. I uh, probably would have had to resort to eBay, and, you know, eBay prices are tend to run high. Um, 
Uh, but uh, yeah, I can't think of anything right now that would make a great story. Man, a Castle Grayskull uh, at Goodwill, that's, that's pretty good. That's, uh, that's excellent, that's a great find. Um, and a, uh, a Night Raven for 10 bucks, that's excellent too. Congratulations to you, but I don't think I have a good story for you. I feel bad about that. I'll hopefully, uh, in the coming year, I'll come across something that'll be just a great story for that kind of thing. But um, I haven't, haven't found a lot of great deals like that just, you know, out in the wild. Um, now, moving on to Matthew Hudson's question. Uh, do you plan to attend the 2018 G.I. Joe convention in Chattanooga, Tennessee? I apologize if you already answered this elsewhere. I'm new to your videos. Well, welcome! Uh, it's always nice to have people who are new to the videos. I'm glad you found uh, the channel, and I hope you uh, enjoy them. Uh, I am planning to attend JoeCon in Chattanooga, Tennessee uh, next year. Uh, I've been able to go for the last, what, I think four years? Four or five years, something like that. Um, I haven't missed a JoeCon. I've been to... Um, all of them. Um, I only wish I could have gone to them earlier. I didn't, I mean, uh, I didn't, I wasn't collecting G.I. Joe at the time, so I didn't know they were doing Joe Con until I started to become a collector and then discovered, hey, they have a convention. Um, so I only wish I could have gone to the earlier ones. It does look like the 2018 convention will be the last one. I wouldn't miss it. I gotta be there. And, um, uh, as you may or may not know, uh, the guys from the G.I. Joe Bird podcast, are, they're going to try to make it over too. Uh, they've got uh, you know a crowdfunding thing that they're doing to try to get them over here. I'm going to help with that, and I hope they can make it uh, because that would be awesome. Uh, so I'm going to encourage as many people as they can to, uh, as, as possible, to go to that last Joe Con. You know, make it you know, one for the history books. Make it a great one. And I hope to see a lot of you there. So, yes, the answer to that, the short answer to that is yes, I plan to be there. Um, and welcome to the channel, uh, Matthew. Uh, Lander Extremo says, uh, sorry for my poor English, no need to apologize. Um, uh, is the fail failure of G.I. Joe in Japan the cause of the dead or death of the line? A Takara slash Hasbro partnership on Transformers uh, working very well even today. Uh, if Tara, Takara uh, cares about G.I. Joe 2, maybe the line uh, is still going or Transformers is better concept um, and G.I. Joe is doomed anyway. Or, or, okay, or is Transformers a better concept and G.I. Joe doomed? Okay, I understand your question. Um, the answer to those, I don't think... Um, like the failure of G.I. Joe in Japan is necessarily the cause of uh, the death of the line. It may be more of a symptom of it. Um, <coughs> uh, Transformers has a little bit of an advantage there in that it kind of originated in Japan uh, and then was uh, imported over here. Uh, and Transformers does have a concept that is maybe easier to... Um, to keep going for a long period of time, whereas G.I. Joe being more military-centric um, <coughs> will tend to uh, to have eras. You know, it'll have dry spells where um, it just isn't going to be in the public consciousness enough, but then the next iteration will come around and it will be reborn. So that's kind of what we're waiting for in G.I. Joe. Um, I think we will eventually have a new iteration for a new generation uh, but G.I. Joe is cyclical. It comes in cycles, and we're in kind of a down cycle now, and we have been for a little while, but I think there will be an up cycle again. Okay, sorry, I had to stop and get a, a drink, a uh, drink of water. So let's move on to uh, Jedi DB. I assume DB stands for defensive back. Uh, Jedi DB asks, uh, okay, this is sort of a twofer. One, uh, I know you're an attorney. What kind of law do you practice? Um, and uh, the answer to that is uh, mental health and guardianship cases. Um, and the other question is, what is the one classic G.I. Joe or Cobra figure that you despise to the point of wishing it had never been created? Um, uh, that's it for me. Have a happy new year. Don't party too late with the dreadnoughts. Okay, I'll try not to. Uh, but I can't promise uh, not to drink uh, too much grape soda. Um, now, the uh, second question, uh, I think it's got to be Golobulus. I really dislike Golobulus, both in concept and in execution, um, both the character and the figure. Uh, it is attached to, I think, some uh, poor 
choices made with the animated movie. Um, I shouldn't say poor choices. I know some people really liked it, and if you did, great. I, I should say choices that I didn't agree with and I didn't like uh, that I wish they hadn't made. So, yeah, Golobulus uh, springs to mind. Uh, that would be one that I would... Oh, and, you know, this came up on uh, in the, the Facebook group uh, G.I. Joe Discussion, and... Um, Kirk Bazigian, who was in charge of G.I. Joe at the time in the 80s, um, he agrees with me on that. His answer was also Golobulus. Therefore, I, we've got to be right, right? I mean, there's no reason for further discussion. Uh, Kirk Bazigian agrees with me, so it's Golobulus. Uh, I'm just kidding, though. People like Golobulus. If you want to like Golobulus, that's fine. Uh, um, Fragminian asks... Um, most trouble you've ever had uh, getting a toy through the mail. Uh, silliest skit you ever thought up for the show, in your opinion. Silliest skit. Oh, they're all silly. Uh, but for the first uh, answer to your first question, um, I ordered um, a, uh, a Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander and a Mail Away Duke file card from the same source. Um, it was sent, it was mailed to me, it was shipped. Actually, they didn't do anything wrong. They packaged it fine, they shipped it to the correct address. The postal service delivered it to the wrong address because the place I was living at the time, uh, the address was very, almost identical to the address the next street over. It was like street or place. They delivered it to the person one street over. Uh, and I contacted uh, uh, the Postal Service. I opened a ticket about it. They were extremely unhelpful. Uh, they were ignoring my actual problem and not actually investigating it until at some point I gave up on them. I suspected what happened um, and so I decided to check for myself. So I went the next street over and check, knocked on my neighbor's door, asked them if they had a package. They said they did, and so I finally got it. But I had to take matters into my own hand. The Postal Service could not tell me what happened to it, other than that it was delivered. Uh, and I, you know, I, I was, I could have opened um, an insurance claim on it, but it's, I wanted the figure. I wanted the figure at the price that I paid for it and the file card and I did get it. I finally got it, but that was a hassle, and uh, U.S. Postal Service um, didn't help very much. Uh, and it was their screw up. They, the, it was the correct address on the label. They sent it to the right place. It's just the Postal Service delivered it to the wrong place. Uh, anyway, uh, next question: Kurt Road Trip. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I forgot uh, the silliest skit. Uh, the silliest skit that can, comes to my mind. Uh, it was the one with shipwreck, um, where he has the hook on the side, and I said it was an STD that made his private parts move around to his hip. Uh, that was that was pretty silly. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, Kurt Road Trip says um, uh, this is a sticky question uh, as it may instill a political debate. Um, however, the question I ask uh, merely because I felt it important, and I feel the uh, we the viewers should know. Okay. Um, it's a question uh, that can go to you, Mrs. HCC, as well as the children, if they are wishing to answer. Um, so I'll ask uh, Susan later. Uh, I'll answer for now. The question is creamy or chunky style peanut butter um, and no substitute of Nutella. Well, I wouldn't substitute Nutella because I don't really like Nutella. But as far as crunchy or creamy peanut butter, uh, I think uh, creamy peanut butter makes better sandwiches, so I'd have to go with that. And I will, I will get Susan's answer uh, at, the, at the end of this video. I'll bring her in to answer that, too. Uh, so that's my answer, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, Mike Horsley, another uh, longtime uh, commenter. I see Mike's uh, comments in the videos all the time. Uh, oh, and this is for Susan as well, uh, for Mrs. HCC. Uh, how does being uh, the wife of a collector feel when the space starts to run out? LOL. Uh, I will ask her that. I will bring her in at the end of this video to ask, answer those questions. Let me just make sure that I mark those and don't forget about them. So uh, we'll ask Susan that question later. 
Uh, Mike Horsley also asks another question. He says, neon colors aside, what are your thoughts on Eco Warriors, and might you be reviewing more of them in the future? We'll definitely re review more Eco Warriors in the future. Um, and yeah, it's setting the bright colors aside. I mean, there's a kernel of a good idea there. It, it's, I mean, it could have been made into something really very interesting. I mean, the idea of a faction of G.I. Joe that has to fight, to fight against uh, ecological terrorism is not a bad idea. And it could tie into some real-world scenarios, uh, so you could actually bring some realism into it. I think that there's a good idea there. I think what kills me with eco-warriors is the, the lack of sincerity. Uh, it um, really feels to me like a cash grab. Uh, it feels like something that was just tossed out there because Captain Planet was popular at the time. Um, and I don't, f to me it doesn't feel like there really is an environmental message there. It doesn't feel pro-environment, it feels faux-environment. I just made that up. It's faux-environmentalism. I think that's probably what I dislike about eco warriors more than even the bright colors is the kind of lack of sincerity um but man it could have been something good it could have been something good um all right uh glenn robbins says will you ever do a video showing your entire collection um i i can try to um i did that once like a long time ago and i've added a lot since then it's a little difficult now because um some of my collection isn't here i have a couple of things that are at on display in my office um, the uh, uh, the Night Raven and the Conquest X30 are in my office, so uh, they're not here. Um, also, not everything is on display, and space is an issue. Uh, and so, like I have now, like a lot of the figures, oops, I have in boxes like this, with the mark with the dates, like this. Is my 1990 box. This is oh, what's this? Uh, 1994. And so uh, I, I don't like keeping the figures in boxes. I like having them out so that I can see them and play with them. But at the moment, space is an issue. So that I, can, I could eventually do um, a video showing the whole collection, but I'll have, to, I'll have to take a lot of that stuff out of the boxes so you can actually see it. Uh, so that would take some work, but I think it would be fun to do if I can ever find the time to do it. So um, the answer to that is maybe. <laughs> maybe if I, can, if I can find the time and the space to pull all that out so you can see it. Uh, Keith uh, Ivey says, uh, Was there any non-G.I. Joe military toy lines that you incorporated into your childhood playtime? For example, when G.I. Joe came, first came out, uh, Cobra was lacking vehicles and accessories, so I remember buying a uh, Sergeant Rock bad guys anti-aircraft gun. Sergeant Rock, yeah. Um, because um, it was black and had a sticker on the sides with twin snakes giving my Cobra forces something to combat the Joes with. Hey, that's a cool, a great idea. Uh, I didn't have that one, but that's a great idea. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, when the core figures came out, we got a bunch of those. As, and when we eventually started customizing figures, some of the parts for core figures were compatible with G.I. Joe, some were not. Uh, so we would combine those parts with G.I. Joe figures and, you know, create new guys. So definitely the core. Uh, when G.I. Joe first came out, though, uh, we mainly had Star Wars. So if we needed an extra bad guy or something, uh, we'd just throw a Star Wars guy in. Uh, because, yeah, Cobra in the first couple of years, you know, didn't have a lot of stuff. Um, but, I mean, that wasn't my favorite way to play with toys. I kind of like to keep Star Wars in its own universe. And I didn't like crossover Transformers really all that much as well. But sometimes, you know, these uh, kind of knockoff uh, or, uh, you know, uh, these other military toy lines. I shouldn't necessarily call them knockoffs. But, but like Sergeant Rock and uh, the Core, um, we would use those as like extra guys. Uh, because sometimes, you know, you might need extra bad guys. Or maybe I wouldn't put them in Cobra, but I needed a, a different group of bad guys. Like to, um, you know, maybe triangulate against G.I. Joe and Cobra. We did some of those kinds of storylines. 
um, or like uh, Cobra would invade a, a, a country and we'd need troops to represent you know that country and the core figures would work for that and G.I. Joe would have to come in and rescue them we did that a few times so yeah the core figures we used a lot a lot um, so moving to um, Nicholas uh, Sacalaris says uh, name a G.I. Joe or Cobra vehicle type that was badly needed but never uh, was never made uh, Cobra air tube transport or maybe the flying uh, aircraft carrier from the cartoon. You hit on it the exact one, uh, the Cobra air troop transport from the comic books, the, the helicopter transport, which was all over the comic books and looked like it would make a fantastic toy. Cobra in the toy universe really could have used that uh, and they never made it. I mean, T Cobra didn't have a lot of the great troop transports um, uh, the troop carriers that G.I. Joe had. G.I. Joe, Joe had several of them. You had several to choose from if you wanted to, uh, to transport G.I. Joe. Even like the killer whale had a great troop transporting compartment in it, even though it wasn't that main function for that vehicle. Cobra had fewer options. Um, and man, that would have been a great Cobra toy. That's the one they should have made. So that's my answer to that. You hit, you are, you hit on it. Um, John Q says, favorite alcoholic beverage, and will you please review more Ninja Force? Uh, favorite, oh, I've been more of a bourbon guy lately, uh, and I like uh, Knob's Creek uh, and Maker's Mark, you know, when I can get it. I don't, I don't get a lot of it, um, but, you know, when I can get it, I like that. Um, and will I review more Ninja Force? Yes, definitely. I've got some Ninja Force plans for next year. I can't tell you what they are yet, because I want it all to be a surprise, but definitely we'll be reviewing more Ninja Force. <clears throat> uh, Jason Latrell uh, says, will you please review uh, the Battle Gear accessory packs? This is interesting, it, not the first person to ask. I never thought about reviewing the Battle Gear accessory packs. I guess I could. Um, I need to go through and see if I have, uh, have them complete. Um, I don't think about the accessory pack accessories really very much. To me, when I get an accessory pack accessory, it's just something that I'll eventually have to replace with, you know, the original accessory. Um, so they've always been more of a nuisance to me than an asset. But you know what? They were part of the G.I. Joe toy line. They were unique. Uh, I mean, they are sort of their own little collectibles within themselves. Um, so that's something I think about. Um, I need to uh, think about how to review the accessory pack figures, or uh, uh, accessories. Um, but uh, that's something I would consider. I will give some thought to that. Um, Jaden Jarvis says, uh, do you collect uh, the f uh, figure inserts, uh, command rings, uh, battle rib ribbons, etc., uh, and will you be doing reviews on them? Well, I don't really collect them, um, and uh, FormBX257 has done a little bit of the um, uh, inserts, and um, I never really thought about it. Um, when I was a kid playing with those and when I would get those, I always kind of treated them as throwaways. I never really kept them. Uh, obviously, I should have because now people do collect those. Um, but uh, since I don't, I haven't really considered them to be um, a regular part of the toy line. So it hasn't really even been something that had crossed my mind. Uh, like with the Battle Gear accessory packs, it's something I'd have to give some thought to. I think it would be really interesting to have them, and it could make a very interesting review. It's just not something that I've thought about before, and I would have to ponder and consider that uh, before doing it. But thank you for raising that issue. It's given me something to think about, uh, and something that I'll have to think about in the future. Uh, Ewok Hunter 3 says, Hoodie. Uh, do you think G.I. Joe will succeed into the 2020s, <clears throat> or will it die uh, around now? Uh, also, what's your favorite modern Joe? Uh, okay, good questions. Um, uh, will it die in 2020? I hope not. Um, I'm hoping that this new movie will be something that brings a new generation of fans into G.I. Joe. I'm crossing my fingers, um, and however they need to do that is fine with me, as long as it is good and as long as it works, even if it's not something that personally pleases me, that's fine. 
We're thinking about the kids now. We're thinking about the next generation. So that's who they need to appeal to. Um, if it fails, though, if it doesn't work, if the 2020 movie is ju it just doesn't land, um, then I don't think the G.I. Joe toy line will die forever. The reason being because Hasbro historically has made so much money on G.I. Joe. I mean, so much money. It has, in years past, has been a cash cow for them. And so, even if it fails in 2020, you get further down the road, it's just inevitable that somebody over at Hasbro will look at the history and look at how much money they've made in the past and will think, wow, I can make money with this again. You know, it, and unless they get become allergic to making money, somebody's going to try to revive it at some point in the future. It's just inevitable. It's just like, that's business. Um, it, it's just my hope that when they do that, it will be done by somebody who cares about it, uh, who appreciates the history, but also wants to add something new. Uh, and uh, so that's my hope. If it doesn't work in 2020, at some point in the future, they will try again, uh, just because they like making money. Uh, my favorite modern Joe, my favorite modern Joe, uh, is, um, I'm not sure. Um, I, I actually really like that 50th anniversary beachhead. I think that's a pretty cool one. Um, I'm not, I can't answer that right now, because I did get, uh, just over here off camera, like these, like, freaking boxes full of, of carded modern figures that I just dumped in the floor. Um, and uh, I haven't gone through all of those yet. So my favorite modern figure may be in, in there. Maybe it's this one. Hey, it's Zartan. Um, and I may not have even looked at it yet. So I'll have to defer that question until I can look more at the modern figures. And So I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Um, Olga Rose. Uh, says, do you s display uh, any of your figures in diorama settings? I don't now. Um, I used to have little diorama uh, sort of going um, in my old setup before we moved to the new house, but space issues have made it difficult to do that. Now all I'm doing is just trying to squeeze anything in any space I can find. I I'd like to do dioramas maybe at some point in the future, um, especially if I can like have some fun building like nicely detailed dioramas, uh, but it's just I just don't have the time and the space to do it right now. So it is something to think about for the future. So, but yeah, not right now. Right now, it's just like it's space. You know, just finding the space to put anything right now is is the challenge. Uh, but thank you for asking. Um, Jonathan M says, Mr. H. Um, thank you, Mr. M. Uh, how does your family slash friends slash neighbors slash coworkers feel about your G.I. Joe, Joe collection and YouTube celeb status? Well, I'd hardly call myself a YouTube celeb, uh, but um, my, most of my coworkers know what I do and they are amused by it. Um, they've even uh, on some occasions got me some G.I. Joe uh, toys um, and uh, they picked the right ones. They got me stuff that I didn't already have. They actually contributed to my collection, which is awesome. Um, Susan seems to not mind very much as long as I, you know, don't interfere too much with family stuff. Um, I do have to admit, sometimes um, uh, in doing all this stuff, I get really focused uh, on creating the videos and trying to get the work done. I get a little bit on the tense side, and you know that's not always a good thing. And I have to, you know, uh, you know, check myself. But uh, as long as I'm behaving myself, she doesn't seem to mind too much. Uh, and plus, with you know Patreon and with the help of viewers, uh, the uh, the show is almost uh, paying for itself, including getting new stuff to review. And that that takes a lot of the pressure off as far as the family goes. If, uh, if I'm not having to put a lot of money into it, and it's the show is kind of self-perpetuating, uh, um, that, that eases a lot of that tension. So, and I have a lot of you to thank for that, and thank you. You are helping my marriage by helping the channel. Thanks. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I think uh, 
most of my coworkers don't necessarily watch the videos, but they know about them and they, they get some amusement about out of, out of this uh, this uh, uh, part of my hobby. So yeah, they, they think it's fun. Um, and Jason Galligan says, HCC788, would you consider doing the occasional Comic Book Wednesday uh, with select top-notch issues of the original Marvel run of G.I. Joe uh, Special Missions? Um, uh, and the, uh, the, kind of the same answer as before. If I had time to do it, that is the number one thing I would like to do. Um, if I could add something to the channel, is I would bring that back. Um, it's just that Man, when I start to sit down and think about what it would take to, to do that, the time just isn't there. It just isn't. Um, and so um, if anything ever changes and I am able to get some more gaps in time to give me some space to do that, uh, absolutely that would be the thing that I would bring back. I so want to get back to reviewing the comic books really more than anything right now. I miss that, uh, and I think I would, enjoy, I would enjoy that a lot. Uh, love in this username uh, says, for the Q&A video, a list of your favorite comic book issues would be great. I wish I had prepared a list, um, but just off the top of my head, I really enjoyed the, um, the origin of Snake Eyes two-part stories. Um, and the silent issue I thought was pretty good, issue number 21. Uh, there are some issues in the 30s and 40s. Um, uh, the uh, Stalker and the Ricondo uh, mission uh, in Sierra Gordo to rescue um, uh, Dr. Uh, Burkhart. Man, it's Dr. Burkhart. Well, my memory sucks. I think that's the character's name. Uh, I feel bad about not even remembering a, a major side character's name. Um, uh, I love those, but I think my all-time favorite uh, would be the uh, Cobra Civil War story arc. All of those issues, from start to finish, just still stick in my mind. I still love reading those. Uh, so those would have to be on my list of uh, favorite comic book issues. Uh, Del Short says, uh, Would there be a way to reboot Cobra Law into something you could get behind and like? Uh, and not a question for, uh, but a thank you to Mrs. HCC788. I'm going to make sure she hears that. And family for obviously being behind such a great project. Thank you. Um, you have going here. I personally love the videos uh, where, uh, where there are cameos by everyone. They are great. Thank you. And I love those too. I have really enjoyed working with the, the other guys who are creating stuff here on YouTube, uh, other G.I. Joe related stuff. My goal uh, for next year, um, I'd, first of all, I'd love to work with all of those guys again if they're willing to do it. Uh, but I'd also like to uh, like bring in some, maybe some guys outside of GI Joe, uh, and like um, in, maybe introduce some new people to what we are doing here in the GI Joe community. Something that they may not be aware of, something that they may enjoy if they were aware of it. Um, but I haven't quite hit on uh, what direction that'll go yet. But I love doing the cameos, and I love uh, having those guys in. They're a great bunch of guys, and I encourage you to watch all of their stuff on YouTube. Um, uh, uh, just, I think they're great, and they've been great to work with. Um, so, uh, so I'm glad that you're enjoying that. Thank you for watching, uh, and I will convey to Mrs. HCC your thanks as well. Uh, I, I like it when she hears that stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I'll make sure that that gets conveyed to her. Uh, Tyrell White says, uh, What is your favorite top, middle, and bottom tier figures? Ooh, that is, that's hard. That's hard. That's hard. Um, let's see. Favorite top tier figure. Um, I'm not, you know, well, Stalker is my favorite figure, version 1 or 1 1.5. Um, so, but if I don't count that, my favorite top tier figure is hard to choose, which is, um, cause I like, I mean, that's, that Snake Eyes, um, Flint is a really excellent figure, um, uh, Falcon is an excellent figure, uh, I'm not sure I can answer. I think I can answer, though, uh, my favorite, uh, bottom tier figure, 
is probably Ice Cream Soldier. Not because I love the figure, but because I've had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> I've had a lot of fun kind of uh, uh, poking uh, fun at that figure. Uh, I've got a lot of enjoyment out of it. So even though my opinion on the figure itself hasn't changed, the fact that I've uh, had so much fun with it makes it one of my favorite bottom tier figures. Um, Evil Crab says, uh, could you make a video on the Astro Viper version 2 or any Star Brigade? Yes, I eventually will. I just haven't gotten to him yet. And I've done some Star Brigade uh, already, and there are plans to do more Star Brigade. I'm not sure how much I'll get to next year, but um, I'll get to some. Uh, but um, even further down the road, I have some specific plans uh, for Star Brigade. So, uh, so the answer to both of those is yes. Uh, Vandal uh, says, uh, Hi Hoodie, uh, two quick questions. Uh, one, Starduster is my favorite Joe. Uh, he was a uh, little more than a myth when I was a kid. Same here. Uh, now that I have one, he's my favorite Joe figure. Uh, when are you going to review him? And two, Mrs. Hoodie, uh, Hoodette, <laughs> uh, what is your favorite G.I. Joe figure? Uh, I will ask her that question. Um, and uh, in parentheses, Cobra, Dreadnought, Joe, etc. Uh, P.S. Uh, Starduster's uh, camo makes perfect sense. He's a jetpack trooper. His uniform would help him blend into the sky, not the jungle. Love your channel. Thank you very much, Vandal. And um, Starduster is not a bad figure to have as your uh, favorite figure. I have one Starduster figure. It's the, the, the first one, um, like version uh, 1A or whatever. Um, and I really like it. Like you, it, for me, it was a myth. None of my friends ever had it as a kid. Uh, and so it's a thrill for me to have one now. Um, I, I want, I, I'd want like to review it next year, but I, I need the other two variants. I need the, the B and C figure. Uh, and again, I don't need the accessories. I already got the accessories. I already got the file card. Um, I really only need the figures themselves. I'd like to have them in decent condition, without a lot of yellowing and um, without any broken parts so that I can fully show the uh, um, variants for the review video. But as you, I'm sure you know, um, even the figures themselves without any accessories tend to run pretty high. They are pretty expensive. And so uh, I haven't prioritized those recently. Um, but uh, that's what's keeping me from doing the review. When I get those, then I'll be ready to do the review, and I'll be thrilled to do the review. I agree with you about the camouflage. The camouflage does make sense in that context, absolutely. Um, so um, I'll get to it as soon as I can, and as soon as I can get those variants. Uh, and I will ask Mrs. HCC your question uh, at the end of this Q&A video. I'll bring her in to ask her that. Uh, Juan Pena says, uh, Hello, Hooded Cobra Commander 788. Uh, I was wondering if there are any franchises you think could cross over with G.I. Joe. Love for your work. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and uh, the, to, yes, there are a lot of franchises that could cross over with G.I. Joe. I prefer G.I. Joe in its own universe. Uh, and I prefer G.I. Joe to be in a universe that looks a lot like our own world, with our own history and political systems and all that. I think that's one of the strengths of G.I. Joe. But if you're going to cross over G.I. Joe with other things, there are tons of stuff they could cross over with. Um, actually, Timmer from Half the Battle has done episodes on whether G.I. Joe uh, would cross over well with certain other uh, toy lines. And, you know, things like uh, Captain America absolutely works great. Uh, Aliens would probably work pretty well, too. Um, I actually think, I mean, they tried to cross G.I. Joe with Transformers many times. I don't think that's as good a fit as they seem to, you know, the creators seem to think it is. I don't think it works that well. But there are tons of other things that, that uh, G.I. Joe could cross over with that I, I think would be pretty cool. Um, but, but check out Timmer's videos on that. I think he actually has some good answers for that. Better answers probably than, than I would. Um, the Droid Whisperer says, uh, what's your current display setup like uh, and how much do you keep out in comparison with, uh, to how much you have packed away? A uh, good question. I've got, you know, it's just right behind me. This is how it is. Um, and I'm struggling for, um, for uh, shelf space. 
Uh, I'm going to move the camera just for a second. Uh, and this is going to get a little wobbly and go handheld just for a second. So I apologize for that. But just to answer your question, it's easier to show you. Um, and let's see. I'm gonna, I've got the USS flag here. Um, and I've got, and the cats keep getting up there knocking stuff over. Um, and I've got, uh, you know, some, some of the rarer figures up there and the, the gliders. And I've got a couple shelves over here and uh, some stuff packed away down there. There's the Tiger Rat and the Rattler and, you know, going up there. Uh, and then I have, let me put the camera back on the, the tripod. Uh, do that right there. Um, and then I have those uh, on display. But then um, because shelf space is short, I have a lot of boxes of figures. Um, like, I, even though I really love the Monster Blaster APC, I don't have a shelf space for it, so I'm just keeping it in the box right now. Um, I've got boxes and tubs of vehicles over there, some really nice vehicles that I just don't have the space for. So, as for, like, how, like, what percentage of it, um, is uh, on display versus packed away, I'd say, like, it's getting close to half of it is just packed away right now. Um, and that's, again, that's not how I want to do it. I want to have the, the toys and the vehicles and the figures out because I like to see them. And I occasionally I like to uh, play with them. And I, I want to have access to them for when I do reviews. So it's not ideal, but that's just the space situation right now. Um, Dark Phoenix asks, um, uh, says, I know you're not a big fan of uh, 1990s G.I. Joe figures. However, could you please explain the transition between uh, Targats from Iron Grenadier's line in 1980s to Cobra line in 1990s? Uh, how are they uh, supposed to land without a glider? Okay, good questions. Uh, and, you know, I don't know that they ever had uh, an in-universe explanation for that. Um, the, like the the... The real explanation is that because they had the mold to reuse, it was cheap to produce version 2 of Targat, and they weren't really doing Iron Grenadiers anymore at that point, so they just made him Cobra because, because it was easy and cheap. Um, but um, I guess if you were searching for an in-universe in explanation, I mean, obviously uh, Destro had re-allied himself with Cobra by that point, so, you know, it could make sense that his Iron Grenadier specialized troops kind of, you know, became Cobra troops, maybe. But, uh, yeah, I think the real reason is they did it just because it was cheap. Um, and how are they supposed to land without a glider? Um, again, something that I don't think was explained very well, but I personally think that the backpack probably has a parachute. I, I see them as basically paratroopers, but dropping from extremely high heights, like f from orbit dropping all the way down. Um, so I think, even though I don't think it's stated uh, explicitly, um, I, th I think they're paratroopers. I think the backpack has a para uh, parachute. Uh, okay, Robert Hawkins. Um, have you ever made a list of what you had as a kid? Uh, what are your favorite Christmas and birthday Joe memories? Um, um, I, as a kid, I, I, I didn't make a list because I don't think I can. Because, as I said before, uh, my brother and I played with our friend Sam all the time. And we were always mixing our toys together. And to be honest, sometimes I cannot remember which toys were ours and which toys were Sam's because we just played with them all together. Um, I, some specifically I do remember, like uh, up there, the, uh, the, sorry, right here, the Sky Striker. I didn't have the Sky Striker. Sam had it, though. But because we were playing together every day, I played with the Sky Striker all the time. Um, Sam had the USS flag. We did not have that. But again, we played with it all the time. Um, and there are some that I just don't remember. I know I we played with them. I know either we had it or Sam had it, but I just don't remember which ones actually were ours. So I'm not sure I even could make a list. Uh, I can say, though, that uh, between 1982 and 1986, 
we had almost everything. Every, uh, the things that we didn't have were like the mail-aways and like the Sears exclusives. Most of those we just didn't know about them or we just never sent away for things. But um, other than that, like the regular retail stuff, we had almost all of it between the three of us or among the three of us. Um, and oh, uh, favorite Christmas and birthday Joe memories. You know, it's weird, but I don't remember a lot of my birthdays, which is strange. You would think I would. Uh, but uh, my birthdays, that I don't remember a lot of G.I. Joe stuff. That I, I know I got G.I. Joe stuff, but I don't remember which of it came on my birthdays. But I do remember Christmas. Um, I guess it would have been Christmas 83 um, when um, really both my brother and I, it was a gift for both of us, got the uh, 1983 Headquarters Command Center. And that thing was just so huge at the time. Oh, I remember that really well. That was a Christmas gift, uh, the uh, 83 Headquarters Command Center. So I, I think that's the best memory that I can offer there. Uh, Raz Holly uh, says, uh, what is your uh, dream team's so five uh, for G.I. Joe and your dream team for Cobra? Each team with one vehicle, Love your show. Uh, keep up, keep, uh, keep up the great job, uh, Yo Joe. And thank you very much. And Raz, uh, I think you have a YouTube channel as well, so you keep up your good work as well. Um, and okay, dream teams for uh, five GI Joe and five Cobra in one vehicle each. Um, that is tough. Uh, when we played with uh, the toys as kids, of course we would pick figures that would fit with whatever mission we were going on, but. I really liked the jungle missions, so I usually gravitated towards the figures that had camouflage. So Stalker often went on missions. Um, uh, oh, who else? Well, Lieutenant Falcon, when we got to that point in uh, 87. Um, uh, Ripcord, camouflage trooper, often went on missions. Uh, Flint. Um, uh, it's hard to pick five, but um, but just the guys with the camouflage, especially like the all-over camouflage. Man, that was I love that a lot. Footloose, Footloose, almost every mission. When a, it's at five, I think that's close to five. Um, and for Cobra Troopers, you know, I always liked the old blue shirts. I always wish I had more of them. I was never able to army build as a kid, but I'd have to have a blue shirt trooper and an officer. Um, uh, and let's see, man, I like, I liked the Hiss tank, so I'd probably have the driver of the Hiss tank, uh, and so that would be, uh, Cobra's vehicles, the Hiss tank. Um, as for, if I could only pick one G.I. Joe vehicle, it's tempting to say the Mobat, but the, uh, the Vamp was more versatile, so I'd probably choose the Vamp. I think that's the best I can do, man. Uh, I suck at coming up with these lists, but, um, for G.I. Joe, all the guys with the camouflage, and the vamp. For Cobra, you know, blue shirts and, and officers um, and the Hiss tank, and I'd probably, that, that'd be good. I'd just have a go, all those guys could go up against each other. Shane Everett says, what do you think, or what did you think of the two G.I. Joe live action films? Um, Rise of Cobra, I did not like. Um, I thought there were some missed opportunities there, some poor choices. It, mm, uh, it wasn't so much that it didn't stick with the G.I. Joe that I know. Uh, it's just it's that it, it didn't tell a compelling story, didn't make us care about the characters enough. Um, it, it just it was a bit lackluster. It, it, I just thought it was done poorly. The whole thing was done poorly. I'm sorry. Rise of Cobra, I didn't think it was done very well at all. Um, Retaliation, I thought was a great improvement. Uh, it didn't do everything perfectly. There are some things I still didn't like about it, but much improved over uh, Rise of Cobra. A lot of the characters that they did focus on did feel more like those characters. It felt more like G.I. Joe than Rise of Cobra did, so better. Uh, I still don't think we've had the perfect live-action G.I. Joe movie. Maybe the one they come up with in uh, the year 2020 will be the one, but... Um, I'm mixed on the live action movies, but I can still enjoy Retaliation. I, I've definitely come around to enjoying Retaliation more than I dislike it. Um, 
Erdio21, uh, I hope I said that right. Uh, who and what would you say are the most overrated and most underrated or underappreciated figures and vehicles? Thanks, and thank you. Uh, that is hard. Let's see, what's overrated? Um, I think uh, the uh, Triple T tank that uh, Sergeant Slaughter came with, I, I, I know some people like that. I didn't like it. I think that may be a bit overrated. Uh, the Cobra Stun, I think, is one that a lot of people like that I think might be a little overrated. Uh, but what's underrated? Um, you know, a lot of the figures that some people think are just boring, uh, I, I, I like a lot of those. Like, I really like Grunt, which I think is a an underrated figure. I mean, it's still a fairly generic looking figure, and I get that, but I still appreciate the figure for what it is. Uh, somebody like a Doc, a, a Doc action figure from 1983. It's kind of on the plain side, and he didn't fit with a lot of people's uh, play scenarios, having a medic, uh, but I still appreciate the figure, again, for what it is. Um, so that figure's maybe a little bit underrated. Um, what else? Um, uh, I, Airborne. I think Airborne, uh, the first Airborne figure, is a bit underrated. I appreciate that figure, I think, a lot more than a lot of other people do. I like that one a lot. I think those. I think those would be my answers, at least for now. I'd have to give a lot more thought to that, to be sure I'm not missing something. But just off the top of my head and looking at what I can see behind me, uh, that's what I can think of to answer that question. Uh, Mickey Joe's MRE review. You review MREs? That's really interesting. Uh, anyway, Mickey asks, um, uh, "What's the most ridiculous figure that you still love? The most ridiculous figure that I still love." And generally, I do love G.I. Joe figures, even the kind of ridiculous ones. Um, I think that would have to be... Uh, <laughs> there's, there's a contest. Because I still... I mean, I think Dr. Mindbender is ridiculous. But I still kind of love maybe the character more than the figure. Um, I wouldn't say I love Crystal Ball, but I like the figure more than I expected to, and it's ridiculous, so that definitely is a contender. Um, uh, some of the Dreadnought figures are a bit on the ridiculous side, but intentionally so. They're intentionally weird, uh, and I like most of those, so maybe that's the answer. Um, but uh, Mindbender and Crystal Ball, though, they could be contenders. Raptor? I don't love Raptor. He's super ridiculous, but I did, <laughs> I've had some fun with him. But um, yeah, I think that's the best answer I can give. Maybe, maybe it's Mind. Maybe it is Doctor Mindbender. Maybe, I think I'll pick that. It's Mindbender, Doctor Mindbender. Um, uh, J S N uh, says, "Will you do the 1993 Battle Core figures?" Yes, yes. I've done a few of them already. Uh, I will do more. Um, there are a lot of them. It is going to take some time. Um, I have, I do have a lot of them complete, but there's still a few that I need to get. Um, 1993, man, a lot of figures released that year. Maybe too many figures released that year. Um, so uh, it's going to take some time to get to them. But yeah, I'll, I'll do them, uh, and I'll be happy to do them. There are some good Battle Corps figures. I will get to them. Uh, George um, Leolius says, uh, what's your opinion for G.I. Joe video games and movies, George from Greece. Hello, Greece. Uh, hello from the United States. Um, uh, G.I. Joe video games and movies. You know, I st like I said before, I don't think we have gotten uh, the G.I. Joe movie we deserve. I think we, st we still have that coming. That's still in the future. As far as video games go, uh, I don't think I've played enough G.I. Joe games. I didn't get um, a lot of the G.I. Joe games like in the, the 90s. I never played them. I was kind of out of G.I. Joe by then, so I wouldn't have gone after those games. I remember playing the G.I. Joe game for the Atari, and I thought it was pretty lame. But that's like, that was way back. It was like, what was that, 1980? Like early 80s when that came out. Um... Uh, I would have to play more G.I. Joe video games to experience them. There was a video game, I think, for, was it for Rise of Cobra that they did? And I actually tried to get that game. I was picking it up secondhand at a video game shop. 
But the one that I got, it, the disc was all scratched up and cracked, and they couldn't give it to me, and they didn't have another one. So I, I even tried to get more recent G.I. Joe video games to play them, and I was unsuccessful. So uh, I don't have enough information to, ask, uh, to answer that question. John Wilde asks, who or what introduced you to G.I. Joe? For me, it was the Marvel comic book commercials. That was exactly what they had those commercials for, so I guess they worked. Uh, for me, my earliest memory of G.I. Joe, I'm pretty sure, uh, is the second G.I. Joe commercial for the toys. Uh, it was the commercial where um, it had a breaker riding on the Ram motorcycle. Um, that is, that's my earliest memory of G.I. Joe, seeing that on TV, being really interested, and then, of course, uh, finding him at the stores. And the first figure I got was Breaker. Prime28 asks, is there an unreleased item that you wish they had released and not released certain items um, throughout the line? Well, I wish they hadn't done Cobra Law. That would be number one. But, yeah, the, um, as mentioned before, and I want to reiterate this, and I think a lot of people uh, are on the same page with me, uh, in the G.I. Joe comic books, there was a Cobra um, transport helicopter that looked really great. And it looked like it was designed as a toy, but it was never released as a toy, and I really wish they had. I think that's my answer for that. Um, Wayne Tetriel says, uh, I am new to you. Uh, well, welcome. Glad you're here, uh, and thanks for joining. Uh, but what forces do you think were better, G.I. Joe or Cobra or Destro? For me, it was Cobra. Uh, they had better weapons and vehicles. Uh, and I can see why you would say that um, Cobra did have some pretty good weapons and vehicles. Uh, Destro did as well. And I think Destro was a better field commander than Cobra Commander was. But despite the name, I am always on the side of the angels. So I'll have to go with G.I. Joe. Um, I just, I believe more in what they were fighting for than uh, uh, Cobra or Destro. So I'm going to stick with G.I. Joe on that. Uh, Joel Pumpy says, uh, do you feel that G.I. Joe, mainly the comic and the toy, got the Marine Corps right? That's a really interesting question. I ask this because the first Marine uh, uh, we get didn't have a rifle, but a grenade launcher. And that got me thinking, did Gung Ho ever come with a rifle at all? Uh, some later versions of Gung Ho did come with a rifle. Um, uh, the first two versions did not. You know, he had the grenade launcher, and then version two, uh, he had, it was in the dress blues with the sword. Um, so, but did they get the Marine Corps right? I, even though I love Gung Ho, and that, like, really started my um, uh, fascination with the Marine Corps, I think Leatherneck did a better job of getting the Marine Corps right. And to maybe to a lesser extent, Sergeant Slaughter in like the more drill instructor kind of role. But Leatherneck, man, he just feels like a Marine to me. Leatherneck, yeah. Uh, and let's see, uh, Mr. Uh, Sayavid, I hope I said that right, uh, says, Hello from Columbia. Hello, Columbia from the United States. Uh, related to action figures, do you have any guilty pleasure? Um, like a bad or ugly figure, uh, anybody uh, cares, uh, but uh, still like, but that I still like. Okay. Um, thanks a lot. You're a great YouTuber. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching from Colombia. Um, uh, a guilty pleasure. Oh, let me think. You know, I always thought that, you know, the tiger rat. Uh, was kind of a guilty pleasure uh, because I really liked that jet uh, even though as a kid I really would not have liked it because of the the weird colors the Tiger Force colors that might be a guilty pleasure um, I, I like Lifeline Lifeline might be a guilty pleasure that red uniform is pretty bright but I, I mean I understand why they went with that and actually does kind of make sense uh, in universe uh, in context um, so I'm not sure that one would count. I, I'm not, I don't know if I can adequately answer that. I, maybe I'll go with Lifeline. Uh, but I'm not sure even that should count. I mean, he, a lot of people like Lifeline. He's not underrated or anything. Uh, so I'm not sure <laughs> the answer. I'm sorry. I hate not having good answers for these, but I just never really thought about it. Um, in general, even though there are some figures and vehicles that I don't love, 
in general, I really like G.I. Joe, which is why I'm doing this. Um, so it's hard to pick one that would be a guilty pleasure. I'll give that some more thought, though. I'll give it more thought. Uh, Ronnie McKinney uh, says, Hi, I enjoy all of your reviews. Thank you very much. I was wondering if you're going to possibly uh, cover the Cobra Night Landing uh, and or Battle Accessory Packs in 2018. Well, the second question about Battle Accessory Packs. I will give some thought to the Battle Gear Accessory Packs uh, or um, Battlefield Accessory Packs. Um, Battle Gear Accessory Packs. Jeez, I can't even say it right. Um... I'll have to give some thought to that, and I'll have to dig through what I have and see which of them I have complete. I probably do have several of them complete, um, so I'll uh, I will give that some thought. Uh, the Cobra uh, Night Landing, which I do have, where is it? Um, oh, it was right here. I have right here. Uh, I would like to color, cover in a review. Now, I need to think about this. This is something I've been pondering. Some of these smaller vehicles are hard to fill out for full reviews. Especially if, like the Night Landing, wasn't really used in media very much, uh, or at all. So it makes it hard to do like a more expansive review for it. Uh, so I was thinking, I, in the past I've done like short reviews for the, like the small play sets, like the, the uh, missile defense unit and all that. Maybe I'll do something like that for the Night Landing and uh, other small vehicles. Um, they wouldn't be as long, but they would be full reviews, uh, and it might enable me to get to them sooner if I can find the time to do them. But uh, I, as for it, uh, if I do it this year, it's not on the schedule yet, but I haven't finished making the schedule, so the best I can say is maybe. Kevin Murphy says, as a viewer from the UK, hello UK from the United States, uh, thank you for doing an Action Force video earlier in the year. I enjoyed doing that video with Cyber Tiger. That was a lot of fun. That was also a really hard video to make. All of those images from Blood from the Baron, we had to get permission to use those. The guy that runs the site was super cool about it. Uh, but that was a lot. I enjoyed doing that. It was fun. Uh, it says, I grew up with Action Man, Action Force, and then the rebranded G.I. Joe Action Force uh, and ended with a few G.I. Joe figures. The rebranded G.I. Joe figure file cards were changed to make them from different countries. If Hasbro had dropped the Real American Hero tagline and gone with an international approach, what do you think the outcome would have been? Uh, do you think as a kid you would have treated the toy line any differently and would they hold the same appeal today? That's a really interesting question and I'm not sure. I never really thought about it. Um, I think it still would have been pretty cool uh, because the toys themselves were really cool. Um, and if they had presented this to Larry Hama as an international team rather than an American team, um, I think Larry Hama still could have done something great with it. And I think I still would have, I think most of us probably still would have appreciated it because it was in great creative hands. Um, and all credit to Larry Hama and Ron Rudat and the other guys who created the toy line in those early years for adding so much creativity to it, um, I think they could have done it as an international team as well. But we'll never know because that's not what they did, of course. Um, and being, I mean, they were initially producing this for an American market. They made it Ameri very American-centric. It's easy to understand why. Uh, growing up as a kid, um, being seven years old, I mean, I just... Of course it's American. Everything I knew was American. So, um, uh, you know, I, I embraced it because, of course, it just, that was, that was just normal at the time. Uh, it was just understood to be an American toy line. Um, but, of course, as we know now, G.I. Joe was spread far and wide, far beyond the borders of the United States. Um, many, many countries had their own version of G.I. Joe, sometimes called something different, sometimes still called G.I. Joe. Um, and so from, uh, the, from the very beginning, G.I. Joe expanded beyond uh, the United States. Uh, going all the way back to Action Man, uh, and I think it was uh, issued, was released in 1965, a year after the American toy was released. 
uh, G.I. Joe has been international since 1965. Um, would American audiences have bought it as well as, as they did at, at the American toy line? It's hard to say, but give it to Larry Hama, and I'll bet he still could have made something that American kids would have appreciated just as much. Uh, and I think that, that, I think, reflects my respect for Larry Hama and his intelligence and his ability to write good characters and good story. I think he could have done something with it. Really good question. So not something I thought of before, but I appreciate you asking. Uh, Marvel and DC 379 asks, uh, or says, if there's a new G.I. Joe cartoon, would you prefer it be like the classic Real American Heroes series or something different uh, with the core concepts of the G.I. Joe? Uh, another good question. Now, I think my, I think they should go in a new direction with it. I think they should, uh, yeah, go in a different direction. Give us something new, or don't give us something new. Give the next generation their own G.I. Joe that is focused on the things that they like and they are interested in. Um, try to capture today's zeitgeist rather than try to recapture uh, the cold, basically the Cold War era. That's when we grew up. It was the Cold War. These were Cold War era toys. Uh, worked very well for that time period. Um, now, if they could update our G.I. Joe in a way that appeals to kids today, the next generation, great, that's fine. Uh, and I would be all for that. I'd love to see a more modern uh, interpretation of uh, our favorite characters. I mean, that's kind of sort of what we got with the live action G.I. Joe movies, although it wasn't always executed perfectly. Uh, so if they can update G.I. Joe and give us like the old Real American Hero cartoon, but, you know, update it for the modern audience, awesome, great. I'm just, I, I gotta admit, I don't have a lot of faith that they can do that. Uh, and so my belief is that it might be time for something brand new and something for the new generation that will get them excited and give them their own G.I. Joe that is not just a rehash of our G.I. Joe. Uh, good question. Uh, really interesting question. Uh, James Barry Jr. says, What made you decide to call your channel HCC788? Okay, why did I call the channel HCC788? Good question. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 is the nickname that I came up with because I was just kind of just entering into the G.I. Joe collecting community. I had just started collecting G.I. Joe again as an adult. And mainly, I was just looking for a name that hadn't been used yet. You know, I was just looking for a unique name. I always liked the, the Hooded Cobra Commander figure. Even though it was a mail-away figure, I did not mail away for it. But I had friends who had it, uh, and so I had seen it before, and I had been able to play with it before. I really liked it, and I wish I had one of my own. Uh, so, I was going to call it Hooded Cobra Commander, but of course there'd probably be hundreds of Hooded Cobra Commanders out there. So I added the 788 from the, the His Tank, the His Tank uh, number on there, the, the 788. So I just added that on the, uh, as a tag, and so it's Hooded Cobra Commander 788. Uh, but it got shortened, though, to HCC 788 um, after, like, really early on, somebody left a comment on the video uh, and just shortened it and said HCC, uh, made a comment to HCC. And it's like, oh, HCC. Uh, I can, branding, branding. Now I have something that I can turn into a logo. HCC 788, there it is. It's short, it's easy to remember. Uh, I can put it in the background of my videos. I can put it in the corner of my videos. I can, it's, that, that's, it just kind of came organically out of somebody's comment, and it's like, okay, I'll just put the 788 on the end of it, and now HCC 788, and it works. So it's, and it's easier to say than Hooded Cobra Commander 788. Uh, thank you for asking that question. 
Uh, James uh, Schultz the third says, uh, "Will you ever do a review of the Thunderclap? Great channel, HCC. Thank you very much. Yes, I will definitely do a review of the Thunderclap. I have the Thunderclap. I have it complete and ready to review. Um, I don't know exactly when I get uh, will get to it. It's a big enough vehicle that I could save it for one of the first of the year reviews because I always review something big for the first." Uh, review of the year. Even though it's really big and it would qualify for that, I don't think I want to save it for that. I want to do it um, at some point in the middle of the year. It's, it's not going to be a first of the year review. Um, but it's a big one, so I'll have to set aside extra time to do it. So uh, It's not on the schedule yet, but I will definitely get to it. And I have it ready. It's ready. I have it in my possession, ready to review. Uh, Abba Dabba uh, says... Uh, What's your thoughts on the 2000s uh, Joe repaints slash reissues uh, uh, DT, uh, direct to consumer Toys R Us six packs and uh, the wonderful comic three packs? Um, those are worth it just for the October Guard and Quinn. Yeah, um, and again, thanks to um, Larry, his gift, I actually have some of those now. Um, so I'll have to give you uh, a better impression as I take a better look at them. I do find them very interesting, um, especially the uh, the repaints and reissues from the uh, 2000s, the old ring style figures, those are really interesting. Yeah, like the new sculpt era and the, the comic packs, and I, I have examples of all of those now that I can actually look at. So I know it's not a great answer to your question, but I do want to take a closer look at them and get a better impression of them before I really say exactly what I think. I just, I just got to take a closer look at them. But I do, I, um, I can say that some of them I do like very much. Uh, but um, as the uh, weeks go by and we get deeper into the year, uh, hopefully we'll be taking a closer look at, at some of those. Uh, thank you for your question. Adam Verwolf. Um, Adam, I have to confess, I keep wanting to call you Adam Airwolf. Uh, Mr. Adam Airwolf says, uh, have you ever thought of actually wearing a hood? Um, I, I have, uh, but I have to admit, you know, I, all right, I can be vain, all right? I actually do want you to see my face and recognize my face. When I go to JoeCon, I really enjoy meeting people. I enjoy meeting viewers and talking to you and interacting with you in person. I want you to be able to recognize me. Um, so I, ha I do have what is referred to in the business as a face for radio. Uh, so, you know, covering my face up with a hood might actually help uh, my, my views. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I, I just uh, I stick with the way I'm doing it now. Besides which, um, Timmer from Half the Battle, he does the mask and, and the hat and everything, and that's a little bit close. And I don't want to, I don't want to uh, rip off um, Timmer. So I, you know, Timmer can do his own thing, and I'll just, I'll just do my thing. So I've thought about it, yes, but I, I decided not to. Uh, next question by uh, L O one B O two, um, Mr. Bo two uh, says. As your collection continue to, continues to grow, have you ever thought to yourself uh, that there are too many mediocre figures and vehicles to buy, and that it might make more sense to just stick with whatever you really like uh, best? Or would that mean you would quickly run out of material for your videos? Uh, as an example, I've enjoyed comic books for over 25 years, and long ago broke uh, out of my completionist mentality. It was liberating to actually downsize my collection a bit. Thank you for your entertaining uh, reviews. Thank you very much. Being a completist means that I do have to get a lot of stuff that I don't really love. Uh, a lot of really mediocre stuff. Um, on the one hand, I don't know whether or not I really am going to like it until I have it in hand. There have been a lot of figures that... Uh, I didn't think I would like, but when I actually get them in hand and I can uh, see them and touch them, I end up, they, they grow on me and I appreciate them more. Same with a lot of, of vehicles. Um, so, um, so I do appreciate having the figures, even the ones that I don't at first think that I will like. Uh, but you hit on the other thing, uh, and it's absolutely correct, if I only stuck to the stuff that I liked, then I would run out of material. And that is actually... Um, 
one of the things I, I always have to think about when I'm scheduling reviews is that um, if I only review the figures and vehicles that I love, like all of the things that I think are top tier, I would they would be all done and then I'd have nothing to review except for week after week of weak and mediocre and bottom tier figures and that I just can't do that. Uh, that would just uh, that might kill my enthusiasm a little bit. So I gotta every once in a while I gotta do I gotta review those figures that a lot of people would consider to be mediocre um, and spread out the ones that I really enjoy so that uh, so I have something to look forward to but I can also you know get some of those mediocre figures done and get those under my belt so yeah um, I never really wanted to be a completionist and the only reason I turned into one was really for this show because um, I want to be able to show you these things and not just talk about them. I want to actually be able to put them in front of the camera and so you can see, okay, look at this thing. This is the variation. You know, this is the, these are the original accessories. And that way, you know, you can make up your own mind whether you think it's a mediocre figure or not. I've done a ton of reviews on figures that I thought were not that great, but people watching it thought they were pretty awesome and decided they wanted to go out and get their own. Well, I think that's great. So um, I got to review even the even the middle of the road guys that don't seem to matter because even though I don't think they matter, a lot of people do. But I do I can appreciate uh, your thoughts on downsizing. Man, I can appreciate that a lot. Uh, so I understand what you're saying. Uh, but for the show's purposes, I've got to got to keep on chugging and try to get each one. Um, James Strickland says, uh, I enjoy your reviews. Do you think you will ever review any knockoff G.I. Joe items, examples like the core figures? Um, well, I did review um, one knockoff Baroness figure, which I thought was pretty funny. The core figures were such an important part of our playtime uh, when we were kids that uh, if I can get my hands on a few of them, I don't know that it would be like a full review, but I might I would enjoy like uh, looking, doing quick looks at them. Um, I think that would be fun and interesting. Well, there's one video that I've been pondering for a couple of years now, and that is to do like um, a history of the three and three quarter inch action figure, like from from the the Fisher Price Adventure People to like the uh, the Mego three and three quarter inch O-ring figures. Uh, to, you know, Star Wars and G.I. Joe, and just follow them all through that. And the core figures would have to be part of that because they were so important, I think, to the history of the three and three quarter inch action figure. I don't have a lot of core figures right now to review. I just don't. Uh, it's something I'd have to go, I'd have to get some. Uh, but, uh, but I think it would be fun to look at. Uh, so it's something I would consider doing. I just don't have plans to do it right now. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's something I could do in the future. Uh, good question. Uh, Terry Turner says, uh, do you have any plans uh, of doing a review of the Hiss 2 tank, hammer, and stuff from the Star Brigade line? P.S. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you as well. The answer is yes, I will review all of it. I don't have the Hiss 2 yet. Um, I thought about getting that at JoeCon, but I passed on it. Uh, the price wasn't quite right, uh, but I will pick one up when I can. The hammer, I do have the hammer, but it's very incomplete. It's missing several parts. The parts that are missing are the hard-to-find parts, like the antenna. So it's going to take a little while and some patience to complete that one. Very much looking forward to that review when I do get it complete. Uh, you will see more of Star Brigade. You should see more, more of Star Brigade this year, um, but it, maybe even more so the following year because, again, I have some plans for a little bit farther down the road, but we will be looking at Star Brigade uh, again um, in, in the not-too-distant future. Uh, thank you for asking that question. James Bond 1956 says, uh, What is your day job? Um, what do you hope to see on the G.I. Joe reboot that will be released in 2020? My day job is I'm a lawyer uh, with the Public Defender's Office, and I do mental health and guardianship cases. Uh, and with the reboot in 2020, um, I don't have like specific 
things that I would like to see, but in general, I would like to see a movie that draws the new generation of G.I. Joe fans in and just something that the kids think is really awesome. Even if my generation does not think it's awesome, I don't care. I want the new generation to fall in love with G.I. Joe, and so that's what I'm hoping for. However they do it, uh, that's what I hope they do. Uh, Martin uh, Kronstrom says, uh, Hasbro has named you responsible for the G.I. Joe toy department. Ooh, awesome. That's, that's good news. Um, and sent you back to 1983 in, uh, uh, with carte blanche. Um, what would you do differently to keep the Joes relevant and competitive in the 90s and 2000s? Oh, that's so hard. Um, I'm not sure they could have done much better than what they did. I understand why they went to the neon colors and the spring-loaded weapons. and the I understand all that. The aliens, all of it. I understand it. I get it. Maybe they could have given us a G.I. Joe that was more reflective of the image of soldiers in media at the time, but I'm just not sure. There just seems to be a cycle with G.I. Joe when it doesn't fit with the general mood of the country and the world for a period, but then it comes back into vogue eventually. I've been on record saying that I don't necessarily agree with the decisions that uh, the marketers for G.I. Joe made in the 90s, but that doesn't mean I could have made better decisions. I'm not sure I could have made, done any better than they did. Let's see, uh, Max Blue uh, says, um, HCC, what vintage figure slash vehicle or both have you surprisingly liked long after a stopping, a stopped playing with Joe's as a kid? Uh, would a younger HCC uh, found something in the 90s as good as 80s Joe's. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, Interrogator, I mentioned the Monster Blaster, uh, although m as a kid I would not have liked the colors, but I probably still would have liked the vehicle itself. And what have I surprisingly liked uh, long after I stopped playing? Um, the Sky Striker, I still really, I mean, that Flipping that landing gear up and down is just still very satisfying. I like that, that mechanism. The tomahawk is just beautiful. Uh, the, the USS flag, which, I mean, Sam, our friend Sam had the USS flag. We didn't. But now I got my own, and it's just it's really nice. The killer whale. My gosh, how, how could I have not mentioned the killer whale yet in this? I, the killer whale is still one that is really cool to just play around with because it's got so much. And yeah, there are some 90s figures of vehicles. Um, a bulletproof, I think I would have liked. That's um, a 90s figure that, uh, as a kid uh, in the 80s, if, if we had it back then, I think I would have liked that one. Um, all right, Skunk Ape. Uh, our friend Skunk Ape again. Uh, make sure you check out Comic Tropes on YouTube. Says, uh, would you rather have one more Sunbow season or one more year of new figures and vehicles for the uh, REH line. I think given the direction they were going with the figures and vehicles by 1994, if they had carried that on to 1995, I don't think it would have improved very much. You know, I, I mean, like if they had continued with the Real American Hero line and not jumped over to Sergeant Savage. Um, so I'd go with another year of the Sunbow series. Since the Sunbow series uh, ended uh, with, really, with the, the 1987 animated movie, there are all these uh, uh, new characters that we never got to see animated by Sunbow. Some of them we got to see in the Deke series, not all of them, uh, but of course the Deke series is generally thought to be of lesser quality. I really would have loved to see how they integrated uh, characters like Outback, um, and Shockwave into the Sunbow series. I wanted to see that, and we never got to see that because they canceled it. So I'd go with an extra year of the Sunbow series. I think I would have liked that very much. Avatar of Coma says, Storm Shadow or Snake Eyes? That's an excellent question. Um, it's very close. I'm going to say Snake Eyes by a thin margin. Snake Eyes is both mysterious, but there's a vulnerability about him. He's a, he's a tragic figure. 
Um, and to me, that's compelling. Mike G. Murdoch says, HCC, what is your personal opinion of Cobra later on using robots like the Battle Android Troopers and how, uh, uh, how you incorporate them into your, in your G.I. Joe playtime? Uh, I think um, as for the cartoon series, it was convenient to have robots uh, fighting for Cobra because it gave G.I. Joe targets they could actually hit. Uh, so all the lasers didn't always miss. Um, and I think that helped a little bit. But even though I'm a little bit uneasy with having robots in G.I. Joe, the way they did the Battle Android Troopers, I think, is the best way they could have done. I mean, they look cool. Uh, they were invented by Dr. Mindbender, so we have a connection to another... Um, another uh, character in the story, and they weren't like super robots. Uh, they were, it would be about what you would expect robots to be on a battlefield. Kind of dumb, but able to march and run and shoot a rifle. Um, so uh, they would, I think they would be less desirable than a regular foot soldier, but it would have the advantage, I mean, you could take a squad of bats and, you know, tell them to go go that way and shoot anything you see that way because the Joes are over there somewhere. Just go. And they, won't, they don't have any fear. They don't care about finding cover. Uh, they just go and shoot. You might have a chance, at least, of either killing your enemy or at least just distracting your enemy while your main force can make some other maneuver. Also, you can have bats just defend something. The main Cobra Force abandons the base and just leaves bats to defend it. Uh, and you just give them the command, just shoot anything that comes in. Doesn't matter what it is, just shoot it. A dumb robot can do that. Um, and so, uh, even when G.I. Joe captures a base, they still have the bats to contend with. And the bats can be deadly. Uh, they may be dumb, but, you know, they still shoot the, the bullets will still put holes in you. So... Uh, there are some good uses for the bats, and, you know, they, I think they did the best they could with them. Um, so I, I can live with the bats. I can't. I can't. Hawk Masterson, a good name if I've ever heard one, says, um, What's your stance on the 1990 G.I. Joe vehicles and figures? Uh, as you have pointed out several times in other videos, you're not a fan of 90s era Joes, but there are several hidden gems in the 90s line to be uh, uh, found uh, that other collectors might have passed on. Uh, yeah, yeah, there are some nice vehicles and figures in the 90s. I, I, I keep pointing to the, the um, Monster Blaster APC, but there's one right there. I mean, that's Exhibit A. Uh, there was some really cool stuff in the 90s. There, and I've pointed out some 90s figures that, um, uh, that I ended up uh, liking a lot. So, uh, yeah. Now, my uh, dislike for the 90s is kind of... There are some specific things that I truly dislike, but there's a general dislike for the direction that they went. Uh, but even given that, there are some individual toys that I think are great from the 90s. I mean, all the way through the 90s, even like toward the, the end of the line, there were still some great ones um, in there in the toy line. So yeah, I, I have to give uh, props to the 90s. It was not all bad, and I try to point out the good stuff when I can find it. Uh, Joseph uh, Kristovich says, Why do you think Clutch um, is a jerk in the comics, and what do you think about uh, Agent Helix? Well, I don't know a whole lot about Agent Helix, so I'll have to pass on that one. But uh, Clutch, um, yeah, I think, I mean, those, are, those early G.I. Joe characters, they had to have something to distinguish one character from another. Uh, because, frankly, a lot of them, looked a lot alike. Um, so they had to have fairly sharply contrasting character traits, and Clutch just happened to be the one uh, who got to be kind of, the, uh, a, kind of a jerk. Now they tried to, or Larry tried to write him kind of as more of a lovable jerk. Um, he's not like necessarily mean-spirited, he's just kind of a, kind of a jackass. Nerdshit says, what are some G.I. Joe figures or vehicles you don't have but would like to review? Number one, the 1982 Cobra Missile Command Headquarters. Man, I would love to get my hands on that. That's one I, I covet the most. Uh, the Defiant Shuttle Complex is probably a higher priority. Don't have it. 
still want it, still want to review it. Uh, so that's uh, the big one. And, of course, the, the figures that came with those. Um, so, yeah, those are probably the top of my list. Um, and I, would re I really hope I can nail down the Defiant Shuttle Complex this year. It, it is a goal. Joe Motion Videos 82. This is Byron. I, you've, uh, men I've mentioned Byron before. Hello, Byron. How are you doing? I hope everything's going well with you and your dad and everything. Um, Byron says, HCC, if you had to start collecting all over again, what would you do differently? Uh, and then he says, Mrs. HCC, what do you think of his collection and YouTube channel? I will uh, have um, Susan answer that question at the end, uh, along with the other questions. As for your first question, um, in the beginning, I was trying to be really organized and like get things, like get one year at a time, like get all of 1982, get all of 1983, get all of 1980. Um, and since I was focused on a year at a time, whenever I would uh, get something from outside the year I was focusing on, I would just sell it or trade it off because uh, I didn't need it. I wasn't at that point in my collecting uh, goals. Uh, if I had it to do over again, I would have kept that stuff because some of the stuff that I sold off, I would have some co complete vehicles and figures right now if I hadn't gotten rid of them before. And now I want them. Now I want them back. Uh, so, um, yeah, I probably would have held on to those. That's, one. I think, the one thing I would have done differently. And now I, I have a hard time getting rid of anything, of selling anything, trading anything. I just, I just, I, I just keep it. Um, but that's not necessarily the best thing to do either. Um, in fact, I probably should uh, take some of my duplicates and put them back out there into the market so some other people can enjoy them. Maybe I, that's something I should do um, in 2018. That might be a New Year's resolution is to, to um, let go of some of those, uh, those duplicates. All right, Pensive Ruin says, thank you for your passion for G.I. Joe. Thank you. Um, what are your life dreams and have you realized them? Oh, such a hard question. My life goal was to finish law school and to get my license, pass the bar and get my license. That took a long time. To get my bachelor's degree took years because I was working full time at the time. I had a small business as well. At the same time, I was working full time and I was going to, to school at night. Um, it took a long time just to get to law school. It almost seemed like it never happened. Then when I finally got to law school, that was a, a tough, hard slog to get through three years of that. And then to uh, get past the bar exam and actually get a license. And then after that, to find a place where I could work that I would enjoy. I had one, my first job after law school was a dud. It turned out to not be what I wanted to do at all. So I ended up leaving that job. And it, was, uh, it, it took a little bit to find the job that I'm in now. Um, and so I'm really, I'm, I am where I wanted to be. Uh, this is the goal that I set out for myself, uh, geez, more than 10 years ago. And, and it, I made it, I'm here. I, I'm doing what I intended to do. Uh, and so I got to say, yeah, I kind of have realized my dreams. Chromius asks, what classic continuity do you prefer? The Marvel comics or the Sunbow cartoon? I've always been a comics guy. Um, I love the comics. Of course, the comics aren't perfect either. The comics had their own moments of silliness. But um, I always preferred the comics over the cartoons. I've grown to appreciate the cartoons more now as an adult. When I was a kid, when I would turn on the cartoon, I was always disappointed in it because it wasn't like the comic book. Um, and that's, I know that's not a great attitude to have. It's very narrow-minded. I was a narrow-minded kid. I've, I've expanded my, my horizons a bit as an adult. So I appreciate the cartoon series more now as an adult. But, um, but I still prefer the, the uh, comic book. Um, what Larry Hama did with it, I think, is something special. Uh, I think it is the main reason why we are still talking about G.I. Joe now, uh, is the, the decisions that he made way back then uh, in the comic book. Um, and those decisions which influenced the cartoon series 
uh, and it even influenced the toy line a bit. I mean, the toy line um, was the reason for the comic book existing, but then the comic book produced characters like the Baroness, who eventually made it into the toy line. Oh, okay, uh, uh, Chromelius has another question, he says. Um, uh, or alternatively, who was um, a better match with Scarlet, Duke, or Snake Eyes? Um, I, I'm a Scarlet and Snake Eyes uh, fan. That's, I'm, all, I'm on Team Snake Eyes. The way I understand the character of Scarlet, uh, if she's going to be attracted to or partnered with anyone, uh, it would be Snake Eyes with his depth and his mystery and his, I don't know, his, despite all of his tragedy, he has almost like a zen calm to him. Uh, qualities that Duke definitely does not have. Now, that's not a knock against Duke. Duke is his own interesting character. I just think uh, Snake Eyes would appeal to Scarlet uh, more than Duke would. So I'm on Team Snake Eyes. And uh, it looks like uh, Bad Ape says, um, HCC788, what is your opinions on the 25th anniversary slash resculpt figures and vehicles also, will you ever review the 12-inch G.I. Joe figures from the early 90s? Um, okay, um, uh, I got a whole bunch of, of the modern uh, and 25th anniversary figures. I'm still going through them. Um, I've said before, I love the look of them. Um, I love the detail, the articulation, um, the, the, the accessories. I think uh, they, they just do a fantastic job of those. Uh, but uh, I want to dig into them a little bit more and get more of an impression of them uh, before I fully answer that question. You know, I never really thought about reviewing the 12-inch G.I. Joe figures from the 90s. I mean, from the, uh, the 60s I did. The 12-inch from the 90s, I don't know. I see them every once in a while. Uh, I see them at resale shops and at uh, uh, vintage toy vendors and stuff like that. I, I never picked one up. Um, I guess maybe I could gauge the interest in that. Um, I never got them as a, a kid, so I, ne I don't have any experience with them. So I'd really have to uh, kind of really look at them to see if that's something that I would be interested in doing. And good question. Uh, it's not something I'd thought of before. And Comic Book Guy says, uh, Do you think that G.I. Joe will be continued by the next generation since kids today don't play with toys as much? Um, that's a fair question, and I think that's actually our last question before uh, we call in... Uh, uh, Mrs. Hooded Cobra Commander to answer her questions. Um, the answer is, um, I think the next generation of G.I. Joe, I think there'll always be toys for it, but I think the main focus will probably be media of some kind before plastic. Uh, you are absolutely correct uh, that kids nowadays uh, don't play with toys as much. Now, I have two kids uh, they did play with toys. Uh, they still do to some extent, but not like we did as kids. Uh, the focus is more on uh, video games and movies and other types of media. So uh, that, that focus shift is true. That is a thing that happens. But I think the next generation of G.I. Joe will be more focused on media. It, it, it might be a video game first. Uh, and they might have toys that support that. Uh, but, um, you know, I think that's okay. Because if you think about, I mean, obviously the toys were great. Uh, and it's great to have, like, a physical representation of the thing that you love that you can hold in your hand and touch. Um, but a lot of what made G.I. Joe great in the 80s and 90s was the media. I mean, I reading the stories in the comic book, I still enjoy doing that. Uh, the cartoon series, we still have that, and we can still watch those episodes. We can still enjoy those episodes. It, it's the media that kind of gave life to the plastic. Um, and so I think that's okay. Um, the focus may not be on the toys, although I think there will be toys. Um, I, think it will, I think it will begin with media of some kind. And maybe, maybe the movie. Maybe the movie that they do in 2020, maybe that will be uh, the focus and maybe that will be what brings the next generation in.
Okay, I'm back. I have Mrs. HCC here, and I'm going to go back through the questions that were asked of her. So let's ask Mrs. HCC first the question from Kurt Road Trip. Uh, this is the peanut butter question. Uh, creamy or chunky style peanut butter, no substitution of Nutella. I don't like Nutella anyway. <laughs> I, had, I said the same thing. Uh, I, don't, I don't buy it. I don't like it. Crunchy or creamy? That's right. I prefer crunchy. You gotta have a good bite, and sometimes I'll do creamy, but I prefer crunchy. Okay, that answer is wrong. Next question, Mike Horsley uh, says, uh, for Mrs. HCC, uh, how does being the wife of a collector feel when the, the space starts to run out, LOL? Well, you need to see my home because we're trying to find more space and I've offered getting a shed for the backyard and just keep it out there because there's no room hardly yeah but we've got some ideas to make it more roomier yeah. for it to grow I wouldn't mind having some things hung instead of just on shelves because that'll free up some shelf space yeah. there's enough stuff Hang, but yeah, that is. I mean, we we are already having a, a space problem, and uh, so yeah, I mean, it's it's an issue. It is, um, and we we're working on ideas of how we can yeah, well, make it more efficient. All the stuff underneath ta tables, you don't yeah. really. There's no room. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's I can't. Doable to get. I don't know some kind of storage boxes or drawers or something yeah um, I just I, I can't display anymore uh, anything else I get I either have to take something off of display to display it or just stick it in a box and I don't really like sticking things in a box but yeah no, I like them out. space I mean, is an issue all right Del short uh, says uh, and not a question uh, but a thank you to mrs. HCC 788 and family for obviously being behind such a great project you have going here. Well, thank you. Th and thank you. Uh, and then it's a question by Vandal. Uh, he says, uh, Mrs. Hoodie or Hoodette, uh, what's your favorite G.I. Joe figure? Cobra, Dreadnought, Joe, etc. Sorry, we have dogs barking. I'll cut that part out. I grew up with G.I. Joe mainly because my brother, but I don't remember all that he had. I remember the cartoon very well, and I don't really have a favorite, but if I had to choose, it would be the Baroness, because she was just badass. Good choice, good choice. But it's one of the main ones that I really remember. Good choice, good choice. Next question is from Joe Motion Videos 82. This is Byron, Byron who has sent uh, oh, some things. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Um, and he says, Mrs. HCC, uh, what do you think of his collection and YouTube channel? I'm actually amazed that GI Joe made this much stuff. I wouldn't think that it's a ton of stuff, and I don't have any room. <laughs> they they didn't make this much stuff for for girls by far at all I mean so I mean it's it's fine I like that that he's got an outlet and a positive ho hobby and I mean it's growing I really like seeing sorry. I, I really enjoy seeing like the fan base and the positive growth and how it makes everyone feel because I've not heard a single negative story I, mean, I, I like seeing what Brian brings to everyone well thank you uh, and we had some positive interactions uh, at JoeCon mm -hmm. so yeah uh, uh, you were able to meet some folks there I don't I don't know which fan it was but he had a really heartfelt story 
about his wife, who was so sweet, and I wish I could have got her Facebook page or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but, but uh, we it, I it's, have that info. We do get a lot of, of those kinds of stories, just really positive stories and some great connections uh, with people who are watching. So uh, that's one of the reasons I enjoy it. Yeah. Well, uh, that's all the questions I have. Uh, well, thanks, guys. Yeah. I like the questions. All right. Uh, well, well, thanks, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll just wrap it up here. Okay. That's it. That's the end of the 2017 question and answer video. I, I really think I got all the questions. I really hope I didn't miss any. If, if I did miss a question, I'm very sorry. I did my best to try to make sure I got to all of them. And uh, I know some uh, of the comments were replies to other people's questions. I tried not to count those. Uh, so I would hope I focus on only answering the actual questions that were asked. Uh, and I hope I didn't miss any. If I did, again, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. But thank you to everyone who participated. Thank you for making 2017 such a great year for this channel. Um, we got, we've got some really fun stuff planned for 2018, uh, and I can't wait to see how that year unfolds. Thank you for everybody who's new. Uh, thank you for being here. Everybody who has been here for years, thank you for watching. Um, and um, that's it. 2017 in the books. We'll see you in 2018.